Welcome, everybody, to another rendition of Delete Laws. What's going on out there in the land of the unfree America? How is everybody doing today? Happy hump day. Happy hump day. Les Paul is in the room. Good to see you, Les Paul. I appreciate you pointing that out. As you guys know, I don't really celebrate milestones on social media because until I'm the governor and a peon has taken the executive office, nothing will change. There will be nobody else who will do what I'll do as governor. Nobody. Because they haven't had the same experiences. Welcome, everybody. My name is Chili DeCastro. I'm an autodidactic constitutional law scholar. In the year 2002, Chief of Police of LAPD, Michael Moore, no-knock raided my house, along with an entire SWAT team, twice in the same month. That is what made me begin to study constitutional law. Now, since then, I have been on multiple podcasts over and over with lawyers and Dennis Sperling dubbed me a constitutional law scholar two years ago, and I went with it because I don't have any degrees. I didn't even graduate from college. Just a regular old dunce cap who got no knock rated and decided I was going to learn what the flock was going on with this police state, prison state, death state. Everybody do me a favor. Say happy birthday, Lori Heineman. Everybody, happy birthday, Lori. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Lori. Happy birthday to you. Nice to see everybody. How is everybody? So uh, if you could please, everybody hit the like button. We saw part of this video yesterday. I went and took a look at the whole video. Hit the like button. It'll just take you a second. And there's 300 people in here between Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and we're not on TikTok. I don't know if I'll ever join TikTok again. 1.3 million subscribers that TikTok has deleted. I don't know if I'll ever go back to TikTok again after all that. Anyway, hit the like button. And then two thirds of you are not subscribed. Hit the subscribe button real quick. Just take you one second. Hit subscribe. Hit subscribe. Just real fast, if you would. How is the sound? You guys got, got me okay? Five by five. Will you put in the comment section? O-T-V-O. Overturn Terry versus Ohio. Utah Cop Watch is in the chat. What's going on, Utah Cop Watch? What is going on, my friend? So this is a story of some crazy piggies who decided they shooting imaginary men. So the other cop, she doesn't see him, but she unloads her magazine anyway. <laughs> so the other cop starts shooting. So then the pigtail cop, she joins in and starts unloading her magazine into the car. This is some of the most insane ish I have ever seen. Ever, 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 ever. This is the weirdest stuff I've ever seen. This is on police activity. My car back. I've been no, asking all night. Like, get my car back. Like, I don't care about the argument. I don't care about. I don't even know what the argument is about. I just want my car. Mm -hmm. I don't want to deal with anything. I know anytime we get into it, whether I'm right or wrong, I he puts his hands on me or he threatens to put his hands on me. It gets very violent. There he is. In your car or walking up? He's walking and then she goes right back to him. Pat him down, please. What's that? Pat him down. Oh, man. You see there? You see there? There is the woman being in charge of men. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's a huge mistake. It's a big misstep. It, it is. That is not the biological system. That is not the mental system. That is not the system at all. This guy walks up. Those two men feel perfectly comfortable standing in front of them, talking to him. Both of the men talking to him have guns. Both of the men talking to him have tasers. And then the woman says, pat him down. Take physical control over him. Start putting your hands on him. 
do that for me while my nails are getting dried over here. It's preposterous that we have women police. It's preposterous. Oh, you're such a misogynist. No, I'm not. I love women. Women should not be in charge of men. Women should not tell men what to physically do. They are not our equals. Men and women are not equal. We are not the same. The idea that everybody's equal. No, we're not. No, we're not. We're not all equal. <gasps> wow. Imagine that. We're not all equal. We're not. Sorry. Women should not be in charge of men. Not when it comes to physical activities. And listen, who escalates this to go to physicality? The woman does. And she's sending a psycho to grab this guy. The guy's a total psycho. Pat him down, please. What's that? Pat him down. Because she's scared. Do you have any weapons on you? No. Okay. So why do you have to put your hands on me? Both of those men felt perfectly comfortable standing there with their guns in their holsters and having a conversation. He has to drop his clipboard to do what the woman tells him to do. Down because you're getting patted down. Why? Do you have any weapons on you? No, I don't have no weapons okay. on me. What's that like that? This is key. Don't got no weapons on me. Hands on your pockets. Okay. So, what's your side? Okay. I ain't got no side. I ain't got. Whatever she said is what it is. So whatever she want to do, let's do it and see how far she want to take it. So remember, they're going on just what she says. There's no proof of the crime. She, he, she's saying that he took her car and put it somewhere, but there's still no crime. The car hasn't been missing for 24 hours. There's still no crime yet. He's admitted to nothing. She's saying that he took her car. It sounds like a domestic dispute where she goes back to him for the past three years. Where is her car? At her mom's house. Uh, let's, let's, see how, let's see how far she want to take it. He's saying he just turned over her mom. Mm-hmm. How far you want to take it? So let, let me jump in here because this is the most preposterous thing ever. We send in jackboot thug pigs to try to solve their domestic. My idea is you send in a double-decker bus that's been refurbished. One side is the female counselor. One side is the male counselor. Sit them down and have them talk to the counselor for 30 minutes. Then switch them. So the male talks to the new one and the female talks to the other one and have them talk for 30 minutes. One hour of investment in this couple would solve the problem would solve this problem here. Why don't we do that? Because it's about money. It's about getting money. If you arrest this guy, everybody who touches him is making money. If he goes to the jail, money. It's all about money. It's not about solving the problem. And you'll hear her say they've been together three years and she continues to go back to him. She said that he puts his hands on her. Doesn't look bruised to me. He's probably roughing her around and pushing her. He'd probably be, he's probably being abusive. I agree. He probably is. We're not solving the problem. Locking him up, he's going to get out. She's going to go back to him. And we solve nothing. Nobody has their data. Nobody knows what's really going on. We just punish, 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 punish. And it's not working. How's domestic violence in America? Never been worse. Because we're not trying to solve the problem. You take the guy to jail. He sits in jail. He's stewing mad, pissed. I'm going to kill that chick. I'm going to kill that chick. He gets out. It's even worse. She goes right back to him. 90% or more of the time. And no counselor knows if she's getting beat. Is she getting cigarette burns on her back? We don't know. There's been no investigation into actually what's going on between these two people because we don't invest in people. We invest in punishment so that the civic core prison industry can make more money so that Nancy Pelosi and Trump and Schumer and Biden who invest in civic core make more money. That's what this is about. This isn't about making America better. What do you want to do? I want my car. I think it's at your mom's house is what he's saying. And and the dramatic of her, I want my car. It's just, she's so overly dramatic. It's She acts like she's been shot with a bow and arrow and the arrow's still sticking in her about her car. But I understand she's frustrated, but the damaged, wounded deer that she is, is just, honestly, I find it pathetic. How did he get here if it's um, on the house? Can you call your mom to see if the car's there? 
Yeah. Okay. She just called me. Okay. She she, she's got the keys. Call her real quick. And it's on my car. I don't care about anything else. I'm over it. You've been with him for three years. Since you said he puts his hands on you, you don't look bruised. It looks like he smacks you around. If I believe her, do you believe her? Put a one in the chat if you believe her. I believe her. I believe he probably is physically abusing her. I believe her 100%. I don't doubt she's being abused one single bit. I believe her. An intervention must happen because she's going on three years of being abused now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, what is my car house? What? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't. I don't have Shrewd and Freud. Shrewd and Freud, where you enjoy watching someone else in misery. Just the amount of drama. My car. <laughs> Just uh, come on. Mom, what is my car house? What? <laughs> <laughs> Changes real quick. There's my car at the house. I have the police here at Sheikah's house to get my car. I'm showing you every second of this because I want to show you the buildup. It's not at the house. Where the shooting happens. Okay. It's not home. Okay. The car's okay. not there. I'm wounded. <laughs> I should cry. You have my location, right? I'm on Green Acres. <laughs> yeah. But it's not at my house. Okay, and mom's, mom's there right now. My mom is there. She's coming here. She's coming here, okay. Yeah. <laughs> my car is not here. I mean, at my house. And I don't see it anywhere in, in the facility. Did you have a look around? Detain him, please. <laughs> what? Um, I need an affidavit from you. So, okay. so hold, uh, hold on a minute. She just told you they've had a three-year relationship. She just said that to you. Her car is missing. So then this man stole the car in a three-year relationship? No. Is she going to get that car back? If we actually worked on helping that couple, she'd get her car back in less than an hour. If they actually pulled up a bus where there was a counselor on the left, counselor on the right, walled off in the middle, so that you can't get to each other, it's impossible. Once you go in the doors, can't get out, then they sit them down and talk to them. Talk to them. Talk it out. What's going on in your relationship? You have to pay these people anyway. They're getting paid anyway. It's just so ridiculously stupid. It's just so ridiculously stupid that we keep doing the same thing. And and it's it's never been worse. Domestic violence has never been worse in our country because we punish, punish, punish. And as you know, punished people punish others. Hurt people hurt people. Okay. Where is that? That's where you're filling out there. You're wanting to pursue charges. Okay. okay. So then listen, listen to this female piggy pigtail. Listen to her manipulate Sergeant Beth. She's a sergeant. Okay. Let me show you what the sergeant does when she gets scared though. Just wait, just wait for it. It's coming right up. Um, I need an affidavit from you. Okay. Where is that? That's where you're filling out there. You're wanting to pursue charges. Okay. 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 So she wants an affidavit to her, for her to fill out that she's pursuing charges. You're going to charge him with grand theft. When he took his girlfriend's car and didn't give it back to show power and, and domination over her. Sounds like he's abusing her to me. So now you're going to arrest him. Doesn't get her car back. He goes to jail. What good we do, did we do this couple? She, she's going to go back to him. Put a one in the chat if she's going to go back to him. Put a one in the chat if she will go back to him even after he gets arrested for taking her car and not giving it back. If they're a couple and he drives her car, then he's done this before. So he's being an arsehole. He's done this before. Arresting him and charging him with a felony is not going to help the couple. <laughs> it's just, it's just like, it doesn't make any sense to do it this way. It's done stupidly because we allowed pigs to be in charge of the system. And that's why.
Where's our car? Gracias, Joe Grice. So now, 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 he, now it's escalated. Instead of solving the problem, they escalated a bigger problem. Sergeant Beth Roberts is in charge of men. It's a huge mistake. Where's our car, Marquise? Can I talk to No. Oh, no, you can't solve the problem. No, we're going to separate you. You cannot solve the problem. Even when he's restrained in torture cuffs with three pigs around him who all have guns and sticks, they can't talk it out. I mean, think about that. Can I talk to her? No, you guys cannot work it out. You'll you'll deal with me or I'll put you in the dungeon because I'm a woman and I want to be in charge of a man. I signed up to be able to control and dominate men. She is as sick and twisted as the guy who took the car that won't give it back. This woman is as sick and as twisted, if not more. She signed up so that she could dominate men because she can't in the real world because that's not reality. It's just not. And, and I'm sorry if you don't agree with it. God bless you. Can I call her, can I talk her more? Mm -mm. Oh. Hold on a second. So what does he say? I can't understand what he says here. Where's our car, Marquise? Can I talk to her? No. Can I call her, can I talk her more? Mm -mm. Oh. What did he say? Can I talk to her? No. Can I call her, can I talk her more? Okay. Does anybody understand what he said? Does anybody understand what he said? Can anybody tell me what he said? Does anybody, can anybody tell me what he said? I'm, I'm looking over here at the comments. Can anybody tell me what he said? I, I'm just dying to know what, I, I have no idea what he said. I have no clue. I mean, talk, talk to her mom. Is that what he said? Talk to her. Can I talk to her mom? Okay. Let me, let me listen to that one more time. Just real quick. Can I talk to her? No. Can I call her? Can I talk to her mom? <laughs> I, I think you're right. I think it was, can I talk to her mom? I think that's what. Can I talk to her ma, ma, ma? I called her a ma or something like that. I, I don't know. Mm. Oh, so so she, the cop is going to cut off all communication. What is the number one problem in any relationship? If you work for me and I'm your boss, that people call you boss, right? If you work for me and I'm your boss, what's the number one problem between us? Communication. If you have a mother and you communicate with her, what's the number one breakdown that happens when two people start to battle? Communication. And this woman, she said, can I talk? He said, can I talk to her? Can I talk to her mom? No, no. She wants to dominate men. That's why she signed up to be a pig. I will, I will rid that. I will end it. And, and so many people will say, oh, he's such a misogynist. I'm going to show you a video in a minute that shows that women can't pass basic training. I'm going to show you the video. Uh, Dave sent that to me. Oh, so you have the keys to the car, so the car's not stolen anymore. <laughs> I'm so sorry. This is stupid. Have you ever pulled out an affidavit with us before? Okay, so the suspect is going to be his information. She calls him the suspect. This where it's the narrative. That's going to be what happened, the incident, okay? And then all of this is going to be your information, all right? So don't sign this until I swear you to it, all right? Okay. okay? If you have any questions, get with me or get with one of the deputies, okay? okay. Don't listen to what he's, he's running in his mouth right now. Just let him run his mouth. Okay. <laughs> what did she say? Just let him run his fucking mouth? Is that what she said? He's okay. okay. Don't listen to what he's, he's running in his mouth right now. Just let him run his mouth. Okay. So she's a man hater. I, 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 I'm a practical man who understands from years of wrestling and fighting, jujitsu, pancreation, sambo, years of freestyle, years of Greco. I'm a state champion in Greco. I'm a state champion in freestyle. Third collegiately, my best friend beat me my senior year. We're still best friends to this day. And uh, <laughs> she's a man hater. I'm a realist where women should not be in charge of men physically because I've wrestled women and they can't beat me. <laughs> so, um, and then we get the truth from her, which is don't listen to him. He's running his fucking mouth. He's trying to communicate with her and communicate with the mom. And as long as we keep them separated and cut all communication, that is the base of contention. That is the base of fighting. It's just absolutely stupid.
also um, need to provide her information about an injunction. Yeah. Provide the information about an injunction? Yeah, separate them and make it legal separation so that when she goes back to him, she can get arrested, he can get arrested. No, the mom said that his car is not over there at her residence. Her mom is on her way here. Okay. But mom said car is not there. Car is not there. Okay. So wait a minute. He gave away the car keys. The car is not stolen. He gave the cops the car keys and said, here's the keys to her car. They're having a domestic dispute. This is not criminal yet. We haven't seen a criminal activity. She said he's abusing me. They need to go work it out with somebody who gives a damn about the both of them. This cop doesn't give a damn about him. She says he's running mouth last i checked when two people fight who's been in a fight with their boyfriend girlfriend husband wife or boyfriend boyfriend girlfriend girlfriend whatever you've been in a fight with that person how many times can you not let the other person get the last word nah, 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 nah. <laughs> just this is just so ridiculously stupid and the pig is making it worse so let's see if we can find it <clears throat> let's see if we can find it um I think I agree with you, ladies. I agree that it's somewhere probably within about a mile. <laughs> where it would be. I agree. It's probably, I mean, it makes sense. He parked the car two blocks away and he's being a dominating prick to his girlfriend. They have domestic problems, but she's not, she doesn't have a black eye. She's not beaten. You need to sit him down and find out if he's actually abusing her is what you need to find out. Is anyone by his house in Shalomar? Is my car there? No, I think it's going to be somewhere around here. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're going to check around here. And then if we can't find it, then we'll start looking up other places. You didn't say where it is? He's playing games right now. He's going to play games. That's what he's going to do. Mm-hmm. Happy Valentine's Day, Gloria. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Gloria is a longtime Team DLZ member. She's been with me since the beginning, since I started on YouTube. Everybody say happy Valentine's Day, Gloria. Happy Valentine's Day, honey. Good to see you. Thanks for coming. If he had the firearm, would he leave it in your car? No. He leave it in his own car. He leave it in his own car. <laughs> the, if there was any weapon, it'd be in his car, not in my face. I hope. Right. Mine. Right. When he sent you the picture that we we're looking at, that we can't figure out what, what it is. is. I think it's. I. What do you think that is? I don't know. I really don't. Like I honestly, it was a weird picture. Like it was a threat, mm -hmm. and it was. It's the. It's my. My not dashboard, but screen. my screen. Right. You know? So he's being mentally abusive in a domestic relationship. Put a one in the chat if you know plenty of couples who the woman abuses the man or the man abuses the woman or they abuse each other mentally. They both punish each other. They're mean to each other. And you don't even know why they're together anymore. They continue to just beat each other mentally. That's what you're seeing here. So it's like, why would... I mean, her behavior shows me that she's just as manipulative as he is. He may be putting his hands on her, though, and that's what we need to find out if he's touching a woman. You send me a picture of that. I'll show you again. And yeah. Tell me what that is. I don't know. Wait, I don't know what that piece is because that's not ordinarily there. Right. Does he have any anything on the firearm, like any aftermarket? Like a silencer? Mm -hmm. That's what that is. Oh, she knows right away, does she? Let me cry. But yeah, he has more than one weapon. And I just wouldn't think he'd have it in my car or toting it around. Okay. Or anything like that. But he's sending me a picture, threads, and I'm like, what is that? Me and her are both trying to figure it out. Like, mm -hmm. what is that? Yeah, we couldn't even tell, but more than likely it yeah, probably yes. is a weapon. And he's like, I'm gonna bust your whole shit up. Like I'm gonna bust your windows i'm gonna bust your radio whatever he's like i'm gonna bust your whole shit 
Okay. By the time you get to your car, it's going to be over with. So he's threatening her and abusing her mentally. But those are just words. He didn't threaten her life. Didn't th he's, he's being a jerk, but he's not doing it. The car's not destroyed. There's no picture of a ruined car. I'm like, okay, at this point, I just, I don't want to be done with it. I don't yeah. even want to entertain it because he is known for playing games. Oh, so it's like, I need to show you, like, I'm going to entertain it because he is known for playing games. Oh, wait a minute. So this is a game that they play because they're in a relationship. Do I think he's an arsehole? Yes. Do I think he could be hurting her? Yes, I do. I think it requires a real investigation into their relationship, which would require someone who's professionally trained to sit down with her right now, take him out of those torture cuffs, put him in a room. I say a double decker bus that one side is for the man, one side's for the female and it's walled off. Sit him down where he talks for 30 minutes and says, you're not under arrest. You're not going to jail. You don't have to, you don't have to have the right to remain silent. We're here to work this out with you guys. She's saying you're playing games, being manipulative. She's saying you're putting your hands. What's going on? And sit down with the guy for 30 minutes. Treat him like a man. Sit down with the woman for 30 minutes. Treat her like a woman. Sit down and talk to them. Could you imagine doing that? Sitting down and having a conversation and finding out what's going on between the two of them. Is he hitting her? That's what I want to know. Is he punching you? Is he twisting your wrist behind your back? Is he pulling your hair? That's what I want to know. I don't see any marks. Where is he physically abusing you? We're not going to put him in jail. He's not going to go to jail today. But we need to know. A little empathy, a little understanding. And then instead of charging him with crimes, say, look, we have the statement from her. We can charge you with domestic or you can go to this 12-week course. And we're going to come here and make sure that you go to the 12-week course. And if you don't, you could be charged with crimes. Why don't we invest in the people of this country? It's just so frustrating to me. And now, as you know, what's going to happen next? The other cop's going to hallucinate and start shooting. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I need to show you, like, I'm not playing. I'm right. on my car. That's that. I don't know what the fuck he has going on. But Right. There's a good question by Swamp Lover. There's a good question from Swamp Lover. Did he take the car without her permission? If she gave him permission to take the car, then there's no crime at all whatsoever there's no bruises there's no marks <laughs> it's just insane good point swamp lover get the picture um if she'll give it to you because it does look like a silencer pushed up to the um the dash area um okay so take uh, i want to show you want to go ahead okay so i'm going to pause on this guy right here so this man right here is mentally ill. This guy right here is literally mentally ill. He looks normal. This guy comes to your house. He's got the gold pig badge on, got the pig mustache, got the earpiece in, got the body cam, his mace, all of his G.I. Joe loser stuff. He looks totally normal. He's actually completely mental. I'm going to show you the charges that he got after this. And transport him. I'll stay here and get transport him to jail for what? For, I mean, why are you taking him to jail? Because he may have had permission to take the car and now she's revoking permission, but that's not a criminal act yet. The car's not gone. They have the keys. The affidavit. Okay. Um. <clears throat> He's a mental case. See him right there? He's completely mental. He may be hallucinating now, seeing things on the ground. See the piece of paper he's going to put in her hands? You're going to see that paper in a second. And, then, just mm -hmm. and there's the paperwork. No, no person is going to talk to her. No human being is going to sit down with her and say, hey, you know, let's talk about your options here. How do we get you out of this? You know, if you sat him down for 30 minutes, I'll bet he'd tell you right where the car was. She'd get her car back. And then you put a 24 hour ceasefire between the two of them where you say, hey, look, we're going to put a camera outside the apartment here on a, on a pole. And he can't come around for 24 hours and you can't go see him for 24 hours. And we're going to we're going to meet back here again tomorrow and we're going to spend another 30 minutes with each one of you. And we're going to talk about what's going on here. And if this relationship is salvageable and if he's abusing her, he has to go to 12 week mandatory training to find out how to not abuse people when he gets mad. 
but we're not doing that. So right here, uh, someone says the shrooms. <laughs> Patriot AK forty seven's got it right. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Man. Here, we're going to give you this paperwork. This paperwork's going to make you a uh, victim's rights brochure with nobody to talk to, nobody to sit them down and work it out between the two of them. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. Is there anything else I need to that? So if you can tell me. I mean, look, she may be getting abused, but he's not punched her in the face. There's no, there's no rips on her arms. There's no, when a guy abuses a woman, he often grabs her and squeezes her, or twists her skin and her arms, or typically you'll find it on the elbows, on the wrists, on the shoulders where he's grabbing her. What the vehicle is and how much you think that it's valued at. Oh, like, so she's trying to figure out to charge him with a crime for, gr for grand theft. How much I paid for my car. Yeah. Or how much you think that it would value out right now. Um, so, okay. Okay. Where is it? 1656 Hunt Club. Oh, you're off MLK. Heather Glenn. So they found the car. Then there's no crime. She gave him permission to have the car. He gave the keys back. They found the car. They're having a domestic disagreement. She is not bleeding. She is not bruised. Let him go. And tell her there's a 24 hour protective order. We had to get involved so no one can go around each other 24 hours and put a camera on a pole right outside in the grass. Right, See that grassy area right over here? Put a camera on a pole right there. Is that the other place? That's those apartments. Like on that one road where the um, two gases, gas, he must have walked. Yeah, he walked. How far is that? He was being mentally abusive. He was being a dick for sure. I mean, walking, say about two, three miles. Walking is a little mm -hmm. minute, but driving is not too far. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you know your tag number off the top of your head? Okay. No. It's okay. What? What? Oh. Wait, right there? <laughs> Give me traffic. Shots fired. Shots no. fired. I'm deputy down. No. No. <laughs> no deputies down. Nobody's been shot. There's been no shots fired. And let, let me go back and watch it again. Okay. So typically, just so you guys know, uh, if you've been trained with guns, as I have been trained with guns, when you, you learn at a very young age, first time my uncle put a gun in my hand when I was eight years old and said, shoot it right down the range right there. He said, and I want you to notice something, boy. My Uncle Ray called me boy. He said, you see that there's a great big huge dune right there full of sand? That's where your bullet goes. He said, every time you fire that gun, boy, you better understand that bullet goes somewhere. So where are you shooting the gun right now? Are you shooting at a target or are you shooting at the dune? And I said, I'm shooting at the dune. And he said, that's right. You're shooting at what's past the target. You're not shooting the target. You're shooting whatever is past the target. Go ahead, boy. Put a 44 Magnum in my hands. <laughs> Blew the gun right over my head. I learned quick. I learned real quick. So she's going to hear and be afraid that the other copper is shooting. And so what's she going to do? She's going to shoot at just nothing. She's, she, there's no target. She's firing at nothing. There's no target to shoot at. There's no threat that she's shooting at. She's just shooting randomly at the car. Because the other cop says, shots fired. So now the other cops fire. There's a particular mechanism it's called within the pig industry. Um, friend, I can't remember the exact term. This is just preposterous on its face. What? What? Does she see a target? Okay. So he gets up on his knees. She draws her gun. What are you going to shoot at, though? What's she going to shoot at? I don't understand what she's shooting at. She's shooting at the houses behind the car. That's what she's shooting at. Right there. Jesse, Jesse, are you okay? 
Get in the house! Get in the house! Jesse! Get back, get back! Where is he? Where is he? I'm gonna show the other angle here in a second. Hold tight. 43, give me traffic. Shots fired. Shots fired. I'm deputy down. You're the one that called him, honey bunny. You're the one that brought this in here. No! No! Please! Rafa McLaren, Rafa McLaren, shots fired. I got a deputy down. Jesse, how are you? No! No! Nobody shot. Nobody shot. No! There's the child woman behind you. That's. That's typical how she behaves. Jesse, how are you? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. 43 SO, I need EMS. I need EMS on standby. Suspect is going to be in the vehicle. Where are you hit? Where? She has no confirmation that a shot's been fired. She has no person shooting at her, nothing. She's just making shit up as she goes. Where are you hit? Get back! No! Get back! Okay, anybody to do anything, please! No! I might have hit my best. Okay, no. okay, okay. No! Get back! Get back! I'm not gonna tell you go! Get back! Get back! Get her! Get her and get her back now! No! That's what you get when you call the pigs. They don't solve the problem, they make it worse. So ridiculously stupid. Oh, we know, honey. We know that you're completely emotionally ruined. Stay inside your house. Stay. Yes, stay inside your house. Do you have any movement? Stop. Stop right there. Stop right there. Please, please, don't, don't. Stop. There's nothing going on. I don't want anybody. Yeah. Do you see anything on my vest? Are you feeling anything? Did you feel anything? And my legs went numb when it okay. hit me. All right. All right. <laughs> I don't know. My legs went numb. His legs did not go numb. He was not hit. No acorn dropped from a tree and hit the top of the car. We, you'll clearly hear that no sound of a gunshot was ever heard ever. Hold on. They're going to show the other side of the body cam from the male pig who lost his mind in a second. Numb for a second. I heard a pop come from. Go this way. Can you move? Yeah. I got, I got the bike. I'm pulling out. Do a full search. Okay, did you hear an acorn fall? That's going to be the pig's official narrative that an acorn fell from the tree, hit the roof of the car, made a pop sound. And that's why the pig, who's a mental case, went nuts and thought he was in Fallujah and started shooting at, at the, the handcuffed man in the back of the car who had still committed no crime other than being a dick to his girlfriend. Shots fired! Shots fired! Shots fired! Shots fired. In the oh, I'm hit! I'm hit! What? I'm hit! 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 <laughs> Eric Acorn's rule. <laughs> I 
I, I'm, I'm good. I'm just so you know, when you learn gun safety, your gun never hits the ground. I, I'm, I'm good. I feel weird, but I'm good. Yeah, you feel weird because you ate mushrooms, bro. Cope dog, a dog. I'm good. I'm good. I don't know. I might have hit my vest. Inside your house, stay. Yes, yeah, stay inside your house. It might have hit my best. I don't know. But... I'm not. I don't know. I it felt like it. It felt like it. Jesse, come back. Uh, uh, Mark, right there. Dude, am I hit? Let's get further back, further back, further back. <laughs> there it is. Let me go back. Right there. Dude, am I hit? Yeah, bro, you're on a hit for sure. You are definitely on a hit. All right. I'm going to bring back this weekend special. I'm going to do the same thing. You got to tell me in the notes, though. I'm going to do a buy a trifold. You get one for free. I'm going to do you buy a trifold. You get one for free. Or you can get a pair of Fifth Amendment cop cards. I, I can't give you both again. That's a, That's a Saturday or Sunday special. But if you go to my website, deletelaws.com, when the cops pull you over, the very first thing you do is you invoke your Fifth Amendment right. Now, these, these cop cards right here, this is the non-driver card. It's a one through six step. It is made, same thing out of your driver's license, your credit card. Step one, cop cited. You start filming and you state what's in the yellow. I invoke my First Amendment right. 1A, filming cops is upheld by the 2017 case of Turner versus Driver. Number two, cop approaches and says any words to you at all. While filming, I invoke my Fifth Amendment right to remain silent. Fifth Amendment is unequivocal. Cop loses qualified immunity for questioning you. The non-driver card should go on your visor on your passenger side and inform your passenger that they use the card. They only say what's in the yellow. You have to teach your friends and family. The Fifth Amendment, the Fifth Amendment trifold starts off when the cop pulls you over. You immediately pull this down from your visor and you say, I invoke my Fifth Amendment right to remain silent. And then don't ask me where I'm going, where I'm coming from. Use the address on my D. Everything I need to provide by law is in the slip below. You have your license, registration, proof of insurance ready to go right there, just like that.
Now, right here, if the cop tells you to get out of the car, flip the page open, it's right there. Before you get out of the car, it's very important that you show him and read him, oh, I do have to get out of the car. Acknowledge, you're right, I got to get out of the car. Officer safety is legitimate and weighty. Now, if you can prove on camera there's no way he can believe you're armed and dangerous, you could challenge that, but you're probably going to go to jail. However, if you're going to get out of the car, as soon as you explain to him that you're going to get out of the car because it's the current policy by the Supreme Court, slide it down and say, remember, though, officer, I'm going to be filming you when I get out. I have a right to film cops, and I always film cops' faces. In Izari, it said, our right to film police falls squarely within the First Amendment purpose to protect free and robust discussion of public affairs, hold government officials accountable, and check abuse of power. Now, I will give you, if you buy one trifold, I'll give you one for free. If you don't signify what you want in the notes of your order, I'm going to put the driver and the non-driver cop card in there. You have to signify in the notes when you order. Do you want the driver and non-driver cop card with your trifold for free? Or do you want a trifold plus another one for someone in your family that needs to put this up in their visor? And as you guys know, with every single trifold that I send out, I also send out this fancy broccoli wad rubber band that goes up in your visor because everything goes up in your visor. Absolutely everything goes up in your visor. You have to understand that. Got to understand it. All right. So now I'm going to show you this video that uh, Dave sent to me. That is today's special. So that guy was a total nutball. Obviously a, to a, a total nutball. I got this video queued up here. Wait till you see this video. <laughs> Wait till you see this video. Wait till you see. I only got to watch half of this as I was preparing. Um, Lenny, welcome. Thanks for coming. Kurtz, what's going on? Bruce, how you doing? James, what is going on? Basil Fallujah! Pow, 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 pow. Everybody, do me a favor. Hit the like button. Two-thirds of you in this room right now are not subscribed. It means a great deal to me and this channel, Team DLZ, if you are subscribed to the channel. Do me a favor. Put a one in the chat if you already have a trifold. If you already have a trifold, put a one in the chat if you already have a pair of cop cards. I give these away mostly for free. They're only 10 bucks, but I always throw a pair in with your trifold. So if you don't say you want an extra trifold with your order, I will naturally just put in a pair of cop cards. There's a note section when you order. Don't get the $9 one. I don't ship the $9 one. You print that at home. It says print at home. Make sure you notice the difference. Put a one in the chat if you have a trifold, if you have a cop card. One, You got both. Eric's got both. Happy to hear that. Dave has both. Happy to hear that. So now let me show you guys something. I'm going to show you a video here. This is hilarious. You guys know that I've said that women should not be police. Oh, I'm a misogynist. I hate all women. It's not true at all. I love women. I respect women. Uh, uh, Felicia sent me some videos that I'm going to share. I respect Felicia sending me those videos. Thank you, Felicia from Australia. I appreciate it. I'm going to show the videos because I respect her as a person, as a human being, as a woman. Felicia's not going to take me on physically. I'll beat her up. <laughs> Felicia, I could take you. <laughs> the idea that it's just it's just so stupidly preposterous. Let me show you the reason why I'm saying that. So this video here is titled Trailblazing, and this is the black conservative perspective. I guess I should subscribe to this guy's channel. He's got 748,000 subscribers. This is a good dude right here. He shows some good stuff. So this is when women tried to pass the SWAT test. Five ladies teams involved in the UAE SWAT challenge this year. Belarus, Thailand, Chile, two teams from the Emirates. Oh, oh, oh. All right, guys. So with all the cuckoo for Cocoa Pub things going on. That is world, hilarious. She couldn't even hold onto the rope. Take a step back and laugh at the idiocy, okay? Laugh at the fact that we really are living in Looney Tunes world where up is down and down is up, and we do things that really don't make any sense, okay? Um, and what you're going to see here is a consequence of some of the things that we're trying to do as a society where we ignore the differences in gender between men and women, specifically when it comes to physical abilities. There are just some jobs, there are just some occupations that are just more equipped for men 
than women. And there's some occupations and jobs that are just more equipped for women than men. That's just how it is. However, in today's society where, you know, hey, men and women are equal, okay, in regards to everything, okay, I'm not just talking about equal rights, in which, you know, men and women should have equal rights, but that doesn't mean that men and women are equal. And uh, this video right here is exactly what I'm talking about. As Chile decided to highlight an all women's SWAT team for the international SWAT competition in the UAE. And um, I just want to give you guys some context before we get into it. <clears throat> uh, this Chilean all women SWAT team is supposed to be a trailblazing team. Okay. This is their elite force. Okay. This is their women, right? So this is the elite of the elite. And they first introduced a woman into the competition back in like 2019 or 2020 or something like that. And uh, they've been pushing to have all women's competitions in order to promote diversity and inclusion. Okay. And let's just say that diversity and inclusion didn't really work out too well doing this competition and really kind of shows why we do have a difference between men and women in regards to jobs and occupations, right? Why gender and biology matters, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and play this video uh, so you guys can see how this went because this did not go, <laughs> this did not go well for these women. So without further ado, let's get to it. Vamos. Five ladies teams involved in the UE SWAT challenge this year. Belarus, Thailand, Chile, two teams from the Emirates. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> the first one to get wet in the ice bath today. <laughs> And uh, yeah, keep in mind, this is supposed to be an elite, an elite group of law enforcement women. OK, so this is the best of the best in Chile. OK, if I'm a cartel and I'm watching this, OK, I'm building moats. Right? I'm building moats all across the country. I'm just saying. Uh, well, they are stuck in the middle of that zip line. <laughs> Remember, if you fall in the ice bath, you have to go back. To the beginning of the zip line and do it again. And currently, <laughs> Chile have uh, three team members stranded in the middle of that ice bath. <laughs> Thankfully, the water will be a little bit warmer than it was earlier on this morning. Vamos, vamos. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you need a lot of force, momentum grip strength in order to make this work okay this okay is so so just so you know um <laughs> i was a gymnast growing up uh, you have to kip you have to kip your body has to go into a kip position your feet have to kip up to your to your head and then that creates momentum and you can swing like that very few women unless they're gymnasts are, are able to kip up it's called a kip k-i-p and they can't do it so they shouldn't be in charge of men. That's all I'm saying. They shouldn't be in charge of men. If you can't do what I can do physically, then you shouldn't tell me what to do physically. Shouldn't have women NFL referees. Shouldn't have women NFL basketball refs. Shouldn't have the only sports that you should have women refereeing are for women's sports because there is the same speed. They're the same level of physicality. You're seeing it here. Women should not be police. It's a joke. This is why... The differences between men and women physically, it, it matters when you talk about these types of jobs because it's just harder for them as women to get the momentum needed to, uh, you know, get across this moat um, because they don't have the same amount of physical strength as men. <laughs> so that struggle. And it just goes to show you how, uh, how important momentum is. <laughs> Oh, oh, three team members in the drink. Oh, it's all going horribly wrong. Hey, hey, they look uh, good, though. 
Hey, I'm just saying though, they, you know, this one right here, she looked thick, right? She looked like she shaped nicely. Okay, so I'm just saying, at the very least, they look good though, you know. But I just don't think this is the profession um, for them. Okay, I really don't. Well, forget about <laughs> getting wet. The uh, the violations, the major safety violations for dropping weapons in the water. Yeah, so they dropped all their weapons all in the right. water. They got to get the fish nets. <laughs> Considerable. Oh, my goodness. Well. Wow. They will have to retrieve those uh, weapons from the ice bath. <laughs> and this is in the UAE, too, right? This is you know, where the Arabs are, okay? And, and you know, the Arabs, <laughs> you know, the Muslims over there, there's they're some of uh, the most conservative people on earth when it comes to gender roles, right? And they're probably watching this. They're probably like, yeah, this is why we don't allow this, right? <laughs> this is why we don't do this. This is proof and evidence on <laughs> why we don't allow this. And um, wow, well, I said it on a couple of occasions today that uh, if that first member does not get across the ice bath and carry that momentum it forces those behind to stall and that's when the problems begin and uh, we saw that didn't we it almost happened a little bit earlier on let's see if they get it this just time. Uh, talking to the judges at the moment there you don't need a judge you got to make it across the line honey it has nothing to do with the judge it only has to do with being physically strong enough and capable to get across the zip line. That's all it has to do with. It's not personal. You were not born the same way that God made me. I was not born the same way that God made you. I cannot bear children. You can. I respect you. I want to protect you. I don't want you doing stupid shit like this. This is for crazy men. Men who are brave. Men who are courageous. Have they um, retrieving her earrings? Retrieved all of the equipment. <laughs> oh, and of course, the added problem comes with. Uh... <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay, I don't want to make this some sort of woman bashing thing because it's not. I just, unless you're Adeline Gray. If you don't know who Adeline Gray is, she's the most decorated women's wrestler in America. She's a I think she's a six-time world champion. I've seen every match she's ever wrestled. If you if you go to YouTube and you put Adeline Gray, I'll just show you. Right there. Look, look how good Ad 10th world medal, Adeline Gray. She wins her 10th world Olympic medal. Adeline Gray dominates world championships. I've seen all these video. Kennedy Blades, the new 18, I'm sure she's 19 years old. She has dethroned Adeline Gray and beaten her, and she's 19 years old. The the torch the right here, the passing the torch of Adeline Gray to Kennedy Blades. I've seen this match. I don't sit around watching women wrestling if I have no respect for the woman women wrestling. Think about that. I watch their matches. I love Kennedy Blades. She's amazing. She beat a 10-time world champion to get herself to the world level. I have nothing but respect and admiration for women. When you put them into a militaristic system where they are physically in charge of men, it is absolutely horrible. What's going on, Henry? Oh, Henry, by the way, got a little more money for you, man. A couple more, couple more bucks have rolled in for you, Henry. So this is a check here from uh, uh, from Daniel, from Daniel, and I'll, I'll just call Daniel in PA. I don't want to reveal him or his his full information, but uh, right here it says, "How do I cover this bad chicken?" Anyway, I got a check right here. This this is for twenty bucks more for you, Hendry. I'm going to put this into your account, and then I got a Zell sent to me as well, Hendry, for you. So I have more money for you. I have to check that Zell. And then I have another check for you, Hendry. I think it's 25. So I think I got like 60 or 70 bucks coming to you, Hendry, to, to pay uh, Larry. And we'll get an update from you soon in the next couple of days. So now I want to show you guys something. A couple of things here. So first of all, on the shooting that we just watched, let me show you something here. 
on the shooting we just watched, you guys can see that, right? Let me open this bad chicken for you. So what does it say here? It says the top stories, deputy fires after mistaking the sound of an acorn hitting a patrol car. Oskaloosa cop fires at unarmed man after acorn falls. Bizarre footage after an acorn. I'm so sorry. D did anybody hear, hear an acorn? Did anybody hear see or hear an acorn? I'm just wondering, was there an acorn on the scene? Did the acorn have an AK-47? Was there an acorn on the screen on the on the scene? Anybody? Did anybody see an acorn? <laughs> just, my OCD is kicking in. I gotta stop. <laughs> I'm like, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> I saw or heard no acorn. There was no acorn. No acorn fell. There was no acorn. But look at the lying state-run media. Look at the lying state-run media. Body cam shows man shooting at an acorn. I'm damaged for life. Okaloosa man recalls. And this is two days ago. Oh, what time is it? What time is it right now? Ooh, it's time. It's time. We have time right here. We got plenty of time here. Let's go fly a kite and send it soaring up through the atmosphere, up where the air is clear. Oh, let's go call a pig. We're going to read the article about that guy in a second. You have reached the administrative headquarters of the Okaloosa County Sheriff's Office. Sorry we're not able to answer your call at Sorry. this time, but your call is important to us. Please leave a message and we'll return it as soon as possible. If you have an emergency, hang up now and dial 911. Or if your call is non-emergency, please call our 24-7 number at 850 651 Seven four zero. Seven four zero. Our seven thirty a.m. to four thirty p.m. Monday through Friday. Also, our offices are closed on weekends and holidays. Thank you. You may start your message now. How you doing? My name is Chili DeCastro. I'm a journalist. All my calls are recorded, and I just wanted to give you guys a phone call about the Oskaluska copper who fired on an acorn, but there was no acorn. Why are you guys running with that narrative that there was an acorn? There was no acorn. Uh, my audience of thousands and thousands and thousands of people have watched the video. There was no acorn. We didn't see an acorn. Maybe he dropped an acorn out his arse. I have no idea, but there was no acorn on the scene. We looked for an acorn. We couldn't find the acorn. Perhaps he ate the acorn. Maybe when he was crawling on the ground saying, I've been hit, I've been hit, but I feel strange. Maybe he ate the acorn. Maybe he diced it up into pieces and put it in his mouth as though it was chewing tobacco. I don't know. But what happened to the acorn? Is that the same thing like the George Ford Floyd $20 bill? Remember George Floyd had a fake $20 bill that no one's ever seen. Is that the same thing? Is this going to be the acorn that's never heard from? We'd like to get an interview with the acorn if we could, please. And then we'd like to know why you're calling it wrongdoing. It's not wrongdoing. It's criminal. But see, you jackboot thug pigs have been able to say wrongdoing for decades. That's going to change. That's going to change. All right. Anyway, if you get a hold of that acorn for me, give me a call back. I'm sure my number showed up on caller ID. Call us back. We got thousands of people who want to know about the acorn. Call me anytime. Chili DeCastro. Delete laws. Can't wait to talk to you. God bless. Let's, I believe the number, it was similar. You have reached the Okaloosa County Sheriff's Office. If this is an emergency, hang up now and dial 911. If you want to report a crime or reach the communications division, press 1 now. To reach all other divisions at the administration office, press 2 now. If you want to hear this message again, press 0. 
I'll see you, NNC News Now NorCal. I'm going to miss you, brother. You are being transferred to the Okaloosa County Sheriff's Office Administration's line. That acorn is so suspicious. I bet they're getting a lot of calls. <laughs> acorn. <laughs> JT Soup with the funny commentary. <laughs> Have we seen the acorn lately? You have reached the administrative headquarters of the Okaloosa County Sheriff's Office. Sorry we're not able to answer your call at this time, but your call is important to us. Please leave a message and we'll return it as soon as possible. If you have an emergency, hang up now and dial 911. Or if your call is non-emergency, please call our 24-7 number at 850-651-7400. Our regular business hours are 7.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Monday through Friday. Also, our offices are closed on weekends and holidays. Thank you. You may start your message now. How you doing? My name is Chili DeCastro. I'm a journalist. All my calls are recorded. I just wanted to leave you a message and wonder if the general public can help you find that acorn. I know that the acorn triggered that copper, and I know that the copper... He got hit by the acorn. That's probably what he felt, to be honest. There was probably two acorns working together in unison. One acorn hit the top of the car that nobody heard, and the other acorn hit him in the vest. That's why he felt strange. He had never been hit by an acorn before. That's probably what happened. I believe the cop. He should not be charged with any wrongdoing. <laughs> wrongdoing, huh? You coppers are charged with wrongdoing? Never heard of the code wrongdoing before. What code is that in Florida? Is there a criminal code wrongdoing 101.221? What's the acorn code for the wrongdoing? <laughs> I know why you're not answering your phone. The general public is blowing you up that neither one of those dirty jackboot thug pigs was charged with wanton danger. That there was they were not charged with shooting their guns in a neighborhood and unloading the magazine into a car where an innocent man was sitting in the car. He wasn't even a criminal. He had committed no crime other than being a jerk to his girlfriend. So anyway, I just want to know if you need our help finding those two acorns that work together to set those cops up to make them look bad. We know that the acorns were involved in this. We know that for a fact. Everybody here, there's thousands of people watching this right now. As I talk to you, I leave you a voicemail about the dangerous acorns in Florida. Everybody put a one in the chat if you know there were two acorns. Put a one in the chat if there were two acorns. Man, the people here are, are telling me that there was two acorns involved. It wasn't a single acorn offense. It was a double acorn. There was two acorns. There could have been a third acorn involved. We don't know about yet. And that third acorn could have gone right in that pigtail's brain and melted her brain. That's why she shot at nothing. That she's Sergeant Roberts. Sergeant Roberts just started shooting at whatever was it. Blah, 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 blah. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. They shot at acorns that were hiding. <laughs> you guys are whack. You guys are whack. Really? You are whacked out. No wrongdoing. It was a crime what they did. It was a crime. Wake up, pigos. Wake up. When I'm governor, I'm going to change the pigs from the top down. You guys are in big trouble. Everything's going to change. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find those acorns. All right. Nice talking to you. Appreciate your time. You have a good day. I hope no acorns were harmed in the filming of this video. <laughs> They're not going to answer the phone. They are not going to answer the phone. All right, let's read the article now. Let's take a look at the article. No pigos were charged in this crime. They were charged with no wrongdoing. No wrongdoing, okay? JT Soup, you are freaking hilarious today, dude. JT Soup is dropping just bombs. <laughs> Stomper, what's going on, buddy? All right, let's get into the article here real quick here. Marquise Jackson was handcuffed in the back of a pig shack car 
when officers, when pigs began firing into the car after being startled by an acorn. There's another lie. There was no acorn. Put in the chat, please. There was no acorn. Put in the chat. Put in the chat. There was no acorn. Put it in the chat. There was no acorn. It 50 caliber acorn. <laughs> who can who can come up with the funniest quip? Put the funniest quip about the acorns. I'll put it up on the screen. One second. Let me read this for you guys. In November of 2023, an Okaloosa, Florida, in Okaloosa County, Florida, got in a heated shootout with an acorn, endangering the life of a detained man. Why did they say detained? Tortured man in the back of a car. In a video that has gone viral on social media this week for both its absurdity and terrifying implications, pig Jesse Hernandez hears an acorn drop on his car. No, he didn't. In response, he dramatically rolls on the ground while repeatedly shouting, shots fired, and unloading his pig patrol arm, firearm into the vehicle, shattering its back window. At the time, a handcuffed man named Marquise Jackson was inside the vehicle. Jackson is a black Florida resident who had been detained by Hernandez and his partner, Sergeant Beth Roberts, after being accused of stealing a car. Wait, that's... After being accused of stealing a car and sending threatening messages to his girlfriend, one of the messages, including what police said was images of a pistol silencer. So Vice up here, this is from Vice. They're just right along with the cop sucking because we never saw that picture. After rolling on the ground, Hernandez shouted, I'm hit. He had been told he had not been hit and Roberts that <laughs> and told Roberts that shots were coming from inside the car. Roberts also unloaded her firearm into the vehicle as Jackson lay in the back seat. The incident is a stunning example of police incompetence and pigs' willingness to use deadly force against the public. Let it, lest it simply become fodder for social media jokes, it's worth looking at how the Okaloosa County Sheriff's Pig Department handled the issue and its effect it had on Jackson, who said he's severely psychologically impacted and damaged for life. Pig Hernandez designed resigned while under investigation for his handling of the incident on December 4th, according to the February 9th press release from, oh, we got to read that. We got to read that. Hold on. Let me, let me just make sure I get it. Okay. From, from Sheriff Eric Arden, a document laying out the investigation findings would be comical if the stakes weren't so high. It describes Hernandez falling over, rolling on the ground for several seconds, falling over while struggling to stand up and breaking his sunglasses, sending a piece Flying into the frame, he shouted, shots fired, four times. Said the shots were coming from the car and claimed he was hit. His partner, also unloaded into the car, seemed confused. At one point, simply asking, what? The sounds of, the, of an acorn hitting the car is barely audible before the shooting begins. So it's a lie. It's a lie. There's no audible. During the investigation, Hernandez was initially adamant the shots had been fired. He said that he did not have prior law enforcement experience, but... He trained at West Point and served as an infantry and special forces officer for a decade. So he's an ex-military pig. So he had a flashback from Palooza, Fallujah, which included two rotations in Afghanistan. He said that he never faced combat because he was an officer. Eventually, investigators showed him frame-by-frame -frame footage of an acorn hitting the car. Acorn, Hernandez said. Acorn, the investigator responded. Deputy Hernandez asked, Acorn? Ultimately, investigators concluded that Hernandez's use of force was not justified because the only external stimulus he had was the sound of an acorn. However, his partner was exonerated for unloading her gun. She was exonerated. What a load of shit. This is a bullshit system. And in a statement on Hernandez's res resignation, Sheriff Aiden still defended Hernandez as genuinely fearing for his life, again, over the sound of an acorn. We are very thankful Mr. Jackson wasn't injured, and we have no reason to think former Deputy Hernandez acted with any malice. No, he's crazy. He's crazy, said the pig sheriff. Though his actions were ultimately not warranted, we do believe he felt his life was in immediate peril, and his response was based off of the totalitarian of the circumstances surrounding this fear. Well, let me explain totalitarian of circumstances. So Terry versus Ohio was passed in 1968. 1968, Terry versus Ohio's pass that says cops can use reasonable, articulable suspicion. In the 1981 case of Cortez versus the United States, in the Cortez case, the Supreme Court said 
it's the totality of the circumstances. You take multiple little pieces of information to get reasonable, articulable suspicion. That's how you get the totality of circumstances becoming policy. And so what the jackboot thug pig sheriff is citing here is the policy created by the Supreme Court in Cortez versus United States, 1981. That's where it comes from. Because it wasn't enough to give pigs our entire Fourth Amendment right and take away the reasonable standard that any pig could say he was suspicious. You then could say, well, you know, if we take the totality of circumstances together, the acorn falling, him being mentally and ill, uh, the, the pig patrol with a woman on it who doesn't belong carrying a gun at all. She got scared, so she just started unloading her gun into the car. So I'm telling you, that's where it comes from. The totalitarian circumstances, Cortez versus United States, 1981. And so now we continue down the line. Just as we have an, oh, I'm sorry, sorry. He, <laughs> he felt his life was in immediate peril and his response was based off the totalitarian circumstances surrounding this fear. Just as we have an obligation to protect our pigs so they can go home safely to their families. Don't buy that bullshit. The pigs have a right to go home safe to their family. So whatever happens to you doesn't matter. Your safety, your life, your dreams, your vision, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your husband, your children, it doesn't matter. The officer has a right to go home safe to his family. So if he un if they unload 32 rounds right here on the street in a community, it's no big deal. The officers have a right to go home to their family safely. They couldn't have fallen back and filmed it and saw what was happening. They couldn't have fallen back. Yes, they could have. Don't buy the bullshit. I have a right to go home safe to my family, will say the pig. You say, so that means that you can run roughshod over the public, diminish all of our rights, unload your gun into a community anytime you want, as long as you get to go home safe to your family. No pig, you can burn in hell. When you pigs die, I feel nothing. I hope you burn in hell. I really do. When pigs die, I hope they go to hell. I do. I'm sorry. I don't forgive them. I'm not humanly capable of forgiving this bullshit. I have a right to go home safe to my family at the expense of what? You have the right to go home safe at what expense? Where you're going to take a guy to a dungeon, charge him with felonies when you got the car, you got the keys, and it's a domestic where they're just disagreeing, being jerks to one another? And she was so damaged. She didn't get a car. And he said the keys are in my pocket. That's the keys to a car right there. They found the car half a mile away. He walked over. But they have a right to go home safe to their family. It's a load of shit. It's officer safety. This is from Terry versus Ohio. We have a right to go home safe to our family. What are the three tenants of Terry? Officer safety over all of your rights. Detainment, and I get to grab you and do a POW style of arrest. That are the, those are the three tenants of Terry. And look. It's repeated every day. You ever, I have a right to go home safe to my family. At what cost? At what cost to the public? At what cost to society? At what cost to individual freedom? At what cost to liberty? You are the darkness, the fear, the terror in the night. If you sign up to be a pig, immediately you're my enemy. And I can hate you, dude. I'm being honest. If you can't take it, get the fuck out. I don't care. I didn't come here to win you over. I came here for the people who know exactly that these guys are pigs. They're pigs. If you can't watch the video and read the words and you don't understand that these cops are your enemy, I can't help you, bud. You might want to get that pig stick out your backside. You might want to get that pig stick out your mouth. You got all over your face. You look stupid because you can't read. I, they have a right to go home safe to their families. At what cost? At what cost do the pigs have a right to go home safe to their family? Don't buy that bullshit. They don't. They have a right to serve and protect and uphold our rights. They are servants. This bullshit right here. He had fear for his life. That's bullshit. Pigs. Oh, and then he goes on to say, pigs have the same obligation to any citizen being investigated for a crime. Bullshit. The incident had significant effect on Jackson, the man who was inside of the car, as officers unloaded their guns at nothing. 
While he was not injured, he said in a Facebook post last week, he is not okay and damaged for life. All I could do was lean over and play dead to prevent getting shot in the head. I was scared to death. All I knew I could depend on was God. I ignored everything and prayed. Windows were shattered on me and the whole time as bullets continued to fly across me. I was blessed not to get hit by any bullets or get hurt physically, but mentally I'm not okay. I haven't been the same since and I don't think this feeling I have will ever change. I truly believe I'm damaged for life. Well, Mr. Jackson, welcome to the show. We're all, put a one in the chat if these pigs have damaged you for life. Let me put my one. I'm a broken man. I don't trust government at all anymore because of how many times the pigs tortured me before I had my camera phone and a Fifth Amendment cop card where I could just read the card. That's, you have to just, you have to follow the protocols that I teach you on this channel or you will end up in one of these videos. And even if you don't, you still may end up in one of these videos. These pigs are out of control. In his statement, okay, okay, okay. So let's check that out. Okay, so here's the statement from the lying pig, Sheriff Aiden. And, and remember, this guy's elected. Sheriff Eric Aiden on officer-involved shooting investigation. What a load of shit. What a load of shit. Click here to view the OS internal investigation documents. An Oskaloosa County Sheriff, blah, blah, blah. The victim provided text messages. Deputy Hernandez immediately began working. After Sheriff Aiden said, immediately we began working diligently to determine the complete sequence of events and facts surrounding what transpired. Deputy Hernandez resigned during the course of our investigation, was ultimately found to have violated policy. The deputies, however, were cleared of any criminal wrongdoing. We are limited in further response due to pending litigation. But let it be clear, we understand the situation was traumatic for Mr. Jackson and all involved in having incorporated this officer-involved shooting into our training. Put a one in the chat if you hate cops. I hate them. I hate cops. I'm open about it. I hate them. You guys are pigs. And the cops who watch, go fuck yourself. You're a pig, dude. I have no respect for you at all. You put on your military uniform in a domesticated country like America. You're a pig, dude. I, I, I hate you guys. Sorry. Look at the cover up. We all saw the video. We all saw what happened. You, you've, I mean, I, I mean, let me ask you a question. Do you think, I'm just wondering, do you guys think that maybe they could have superimposed an acorn falling? Because remember, they get the body cam footage. They have editors. I have editors. They could have edited the acorn falling. I never saw an acorn. I've never, I've, I've, I've never seen an acorn fall. I didn't hear an acorn fall. I didn't see that. I didn't hear that. And so the cops wonder why we hate them so much. This is why. This is why we hate you guys so much. Because of statements like this. Because you're lying, jackboot, thug pigs. That's why. Because you are lying, jackboot, thug pigs. That is the reason why you are hated. Okay. So here is Marquise Jackson's Facebook page. Let's check this out. I'm sure he has it public. I'm sure that lots and lots of people. Can you guys see what I can see? Let me open this bad chicken big. So here's Marquise Jackson's Facebook page. He shared it. The Oskaloosa, the Okaloosa County Sheriff's Office has investigated an officer-involved shooting. Deputies responded to a suspicious vehicle call, believed it to be a stolen vehicle, and they found out what's not. On McLaren Circle in Wright, multiple shots were fired, but nobody was injured. <coughs> on November 23rd, 2003, Marque I, Marquise Jackson, was stopped by Okaloosa Police Department on McLaren while walking Another officer demanded, another officer search me. I was confused on why I was being searched because they not told me anything. I decided to cooperate and just follow commands. I knew I had not done anything wrong. I was searched multiple times. So he got patted down multiple times, then unlawfully handcuffed and placed in the back of a pig patrol car while being strapped down by the seatbelts. So it's he's explaining the absolute terror you go through. A few moments later, I heard an officer scream, I'm hit, he's armed. As soon as that was announced, multiple shots were fired at me at, while I was stuck in the back seat. All I could do was lean over and play dead to prevent getting shot in the head. I was scared to death, and all I knew is I could depend on God. I ignored everything and prayed. Windows were shattering around me the whole time as bullets continued to fly across me. I was blessed not to get hit by any bullets or hurt physically, but mentally, I'm not okay. I haven't been the same since, and I don't think this feeling will ever change. 
just so you know, Marquez, it won't. I was no-knock raided by the cops twice in the same month. I have a gun right here, as you guys know. And I always have to weigh in my head, is someone trying to break in or are those the cops trying to murder me by coming to my door? And then I have a gun and then they shoot me. So if you cops come around me, you better make sure you announce or I'll pop you in the head. It's just that simple. I can't help it. If you if someone comes break, breaking down my door, I'm I'm armed and I'm locked and loaded. So you better make sure you announce that you're cops. And then I'm going to make sure that you're cops before I come out, come out wherever you are, because I'll probably be hiding in the ceiling with my AR. I'm just letting you know, don't, don't, don't think you're going to be coming at me because I, I am armed. And if you enter into my domicile, then at that point, I'm dangerous because I'm not going to get railroaded by anybody, nobody. So I just want to make that clear to the cops. You come around here, make sure, be sure. Be sure you don't want this to be both of our last days. I don't break the law. I don't beat women. I don't beat children. I don't rob. I don't steal. I do nothing wrong to anybody. So if you come around my house, just remember, I'm armed. 100%. Don't come around here. Um, You probably are. As shots stopped firing, officers started telling me to put my hands up. Mind you, I'm handcuffed, so I can't. I reminded them that they handcuffed me, which led them to begin to tell me to sit up straight. However, when I sat up straight and looked back, I looked straight down the barrel of Officer Batiste's gun and several other officers with their guns aimed at me. I left it up to God and just sat there how they wanted me with my eyes closed. I remember Batiste because he was the officer who wrongly arrested me and tasered my little brother a while back. <laughs> of course, I eventually found a way to rest my handcuffs on the shattered window area and show I wasn't armed. A few minutes later, they swarmed the car and slammed me onto the ground to search me and look for any injuries. When I got up, I was led to an ambulance. At that point, I just saw how many officers were there. But the image I can't get out of my head is seeing how bad my mom was hurting, crying right before I got into the ambulance. While, the ambul while in the ambulance, they cut off my clothes to continue to check for injuries. I was taken to Fort Walton Beach Medical Center, still torture cuffed. They then took me to Okaloosa County Courthouse to book me in the system by taking pictures and fingerprints. I continued to ask every officer I saw what I was being charged with, and they all said the same thing. I don't know. We're waiting on more information. I sat in the cell for hours. Eventually, an officer told me I'm free to go, and I'm not charged with anything. They are trying to cover this up by not giving out the body cam footage. I need everyone to repost, tag, and share. Anyone you think could help me during this time. Oskaloosa County Sheriff's City and Fort Walton Beach, Northwest Florida Daily News. Why haven't we seen the rest of the article? Is Ben Crump out of Florida? Here's the, I'm going to drop the link in here for you guys so that you can have the link to this right here. There's the link to his Facebook page. And so he linked on here, just so you guys know, he linked on here the Oskaloosa County Sheriff's Office here and the city of Fort Walton. So here's the here's the bullshit statement that we read a second ago. And then here's there's the Fort, Fort Walton Beach. And then here's the Oskaloosa County Sheriff's Office. Let's have a good time here. The, this is where you can drop your comments right here. So here it is. I will drop this link in the in the comments for you. Here's the link for the Facebook page right here. There that is right there. So uh, is I am God in here? Do we have I am God? Are you in the room today, my friend? Uh, I don't love the username, but, you know, hey. He could be the God of himself. I don't know. I'm looking for his name in here because we're going to get the rest of this body cam footage. We're going to get the rest of this body cam footage. So well, let's take a look at this Facebook page right here. I just dropped it down in the chat for you guys. Only 159 comments, huh? Let's view more comments. And so just so you guys know, remember attorney Alan Beck out of California, attorney Alan Beck out of Hawaii and California out of the Ninth Circuit, 
Alan Beck is the first attorney that I know on the record in the year 2014 who sued Facebook or sued the Honolulu Police Department for deleting comments. So that means that you can go to this Facebook page and leave any comments you write. Remember today's special is you buy one trifold, you get one free. If you don't signify that you want a free trifold, I'm going to put a pair of cop cards in there for you so you have some diversity in your package. But if you buy one trifold today, you'll get one for free. If you buy one trifold, you'll get one for free today, today only, today only. I do specials every day. People email me the next day and say, hey, are you going to do that again? No, I'm going to do it again during the live stream. It's a one o'clock today, 1230 today until 1230 tonight. So that's how long you have to buy one, get one free on the trifolds. They're only 20 bucks. And then if you don't signify what you want, um, KT got your hoodie out to you today. Um, I'll give you a pair of cop cards. So now let's go on this Facebook page and read some comments here. Neighborhood will not like the detour. Did you try shooting at it? If a regular person is something that stupid and dangerous, psychotic, we'd be arrested. Exactly. Exactly. Why if an armed cop non-citizen freaks out at a random noise and starts firing, I'm glad to know they won't be arrested and imprisoned for it. Watch out for acorns. So true. Acorn gate. Acorn, acorn. Make sure to clean up all the acorns. Jesse, I'm hit. I'm hit. We need a stricter acorn control. Control. It's for the children. Make it right. Charge Hernandez. Charge the sergeant too. She is implicate. She is implicit in this. Do what's right. Exactly. Exactly. Too bad Hernandez and Roberts didn't shoot each other. I'm with you there. A hundred percent. There's the acorn. Be careful out there. Acorn season. Watch for falling acorns. I'd like to thank the sheriff as no acorns were harmed during this, during the water line repair. Did you hear a squirrel fart? Blew the place up with the DJ with the J dam. Y'all messed up so bad. Now everyone's going to drag you. Yeah, that's where I'm at with this. I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm not uh, too politically correct here yet. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just disgusted. It's just, it's the same old, same old every single day. The pigs get to do whatever they want and nothing happens. To, nothing, absolutely nothing happens to them ever, ever, ever. And it just, it just, it makes, it, it chaps my, it makes my blood boil. It literally makes, it makes, it makes my blood boil. And, yeah, I know it's a hell of a story. I'm gonna show. I'm gonna show this. I'm not gonna show the whole thing again, but I want to talk about it again because put it up full mass. There it is. So, remember the guy that got his 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 hand amputated from the torture cuffs? They had Marquise Jackson in the back of the pig patrol car with torture cuffs on. How tight were those torture cuffs? I don't know. Uh, the man in the car was not hit by any bullets. Marquis said, "What happened to the man in the car? He was not hit. Apparently, they." They must bulletproof the car at some level so that you can't shoot into it because he was not hit by bullets. It just absolutely chaps my ass. I, I don't I don't really understand what you're saying, 951. Chili has sent me one email, the trifold he sent for free. Yep, I did send it to you for free. I know that. I sent off I sent off maybe a hundred free trifolds this morning. So people check your email and uh, for your free trifolds, I, I sent you a bunch of free trifolds out today. You have to print them out yourself. You know, look, I, I mean, it's, it's almost like I, I almost like I have to say this, but I, I don't want to say it. But you, a, a lot of you guys. I give away a lot of stuff for free, so have a little bit of mercy on me. There's so many people who contact me and say, I didn't get this for free. I didn't get that for free. It's like, I don't know anybody else who gives away their products for free. So it, it just, it, people order a $9 print at home trifold and they, they order like two of them for $18. The trifolds are 20 plus $5 shipping. And then I send them a trifold anyway. And then they're like, you didn't give me the cop cards for free. 
it's like, it's so hard because I have to run a business and at the same time, remember why I'm doing all this. Oh, which reminds me of another thing. Your trifold came back. Sean Burn, Sean Burn in Denver. Sean, Sean Burn, B Y R N E, Sean Burn in, in Denver. Your, your, your cop cards came back. Your cop cards came back. Sean Byrne in Denver. It was returned. So just to let you know, Sean Byrne, if you're watching this, I got your I got your cop cards back in the mail. So this guy right here, I'll play a couple minutes of this video, but I don't want to go into it again. This is a hell of a story. Mr. Giovanni Loyola claims in a lawsuit that police in Alabama, Alabama police handcuffed him so tightly for so long that his hand had to be amputated. There's your evidence right there. His trial is taking place later this year. One of the officers never turned on his body camera and the other officer blocked, partially blocked the camera. Jefferson County Sheriff's deputies received a shots fired call at the home where Mr. Giovanni lived. Deputies Christopher Godbert and Ashanti McInney named defendants in the lawsuit arrived, knocked on the door, pushed him, which caused Gottberg to put Mr. Giovanni in handcuffs. Giovanni stated he was handcuffed for no reason. The deputy, Gottberg, said that Giovanni was, was resisting arrest and trying to get up. So he struck him multiple times to gain compliance, okay? Quote, I ain't even resisting. Why y'all acting like this? He said, according to the memo that referenced the body camera, he later said, it hurts. To which the deputy God responded, well, that's what happens when you F with the police, end quote. Remember, he was wrongfully arrested to begin with. So Giovanni complained that the handcuffs were too tight. He said it. But God ignored him. According to the lawsuit, quote, Deputy Gobber refused to even consider loosening the handcuffs. He kept the handcuffs on plaintiff with the same degree of tightness until he had transported him to the Jefferson County Jail that night. The lawsuit says this was filed in 2021. Um, Manasco wrote in her memo that Giovanni told deputies he had injured his left hand in a motorcycle crash and the handcuffs felt really tight around it. Gobber loosened the cuffs and asked Giovanni if they were too tight, to which he responded, no, according to what's written. Now, officers filed a disorderly conduct and disturbing the peace charge. Wait a minute, y'all came to his house. So they filed a disorderly conduct and disturbing the peace charge. Prosecutors dropped the case, all right? They were like, yeah. no, you don't go to somebody's house and say, you're being disorderly, we're gonna arrest you. So they dropped the case, all right, let's put up the picture. They dropped the case, um, four days after his arrest, he went to the hospital, you see the discoloring on his fingers. Look at this, it's horrible. Doctors partially amputated three fingers due to a lack of circulation. And eventually they had to take off his entire hand. It's horrible, he said in a 2020, 2020 excuse me, 2021 interview with AL.com. Quote, I don't wish that pain on nobody. It's just really unexpected. I have no words for it, end quote. The suit filed in federal court in April claims deputy used excessive force and that the civil rights were violated. The Jefferson County Sheriff's Office, which declined to comment, then uh, denied to the court that deputies handcuffing Giovanni led to his hand being amputated um, and requested a lawsuit be tossed. Wow. All right, Waz, thoughts here? I mean, this is as bad as it gets, right? Without actually Damn. losing your life to lose limb uh, because the cops wrongfully arrested you is bad enough uh, that they put you in that position, but to actually come away from that with no hand, I hope they take this Alabama Police Department to the cleaners. Yeah. And I hope some heads roll too up at that police department because this is disgraceful. Horrible, man. Horrible. So let me go back here to this picture. Reason. So this right here, take a look, okay? So if this was a toy company, then the toy would be banned. If you were at a toy that chopped off a kid's hand or squeezed a kid's hand off, that it would be banned. The fact that we allow these pigs to put us in slave torture cuffs, 
The, the torture cuffs today are the same torture cuffs the Delaware colony made in 1638 for the South Carolina slave owners so that they could bring them into the port when, in chains. We have the exact same torture cuff system in place today as we did in 1638 for slaves. That's a fact, Jack. They're the same torture cuffs, and they're making them worse. Now they're making them hinged cuffs, so there's no you can't oscillate your wrists. You can oscillate your wrists with a chain. They're making them hinged so that you can't oscillate your wrists, so your wrists are stuck here. And so that means that the metal's going to dig into your wrists even worse. And why is that? Because the torture cuff company has a billion-dollar contract with each state in America. There's a billion-dollar torture cuff contract in California, a billion-dollar torture cuff contract in Texas, a billion-dollar torture cuff contract in Massachusetts, across America. The torture cuff companies have a billion-dollar contract. That's why there's no movement on getting rid of torture cuffs. When I'm governor, I will break that contract. I will end torture cuffs in the United States of America. That's a fact. I guarantee it. I swear on my mother's eyes, I will end torture cuffs in America before I die. So you better kill me now because I will end torture cuffs in America. All you disgusting torture cuff companies, I'm coming after you when I'm governor. I'm coming after your companies. I'm going to bankrupt your asses. That's what I'm going to do. Your torture cuffs have got to go. No more torture cuffs in the United States of America. This is what happens. If this was any other company, any other product, but as long as it's the government doing to you this, then it's perfectly fine. It's perfectly legal. You torture cuff companies, be on notice. I'm coming after you. When I'm governor, the contract ends. It's over. We will never use torture cuffs again in the state that I'm governor. Never. It'll never happen again. It'll come to an end. It ends with me. I guarantee it. I'll, you, you can bet your bottom dollar on it. I guarantee it. <clears throat> Just chaps my ass. Look at him. Look at him. They, 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 they ruined his life. How many people here want to go without, without a hand? How many people could, could lose one hand? And it's his left hand, so hopefully he's right-handed. How many people here would lose one hand or give up a hand for a disorderly conduct charge? And what happened to the pig? What happened to the pigs who did this to him? Were they fired? Did they lose their peace officer's license? What happened to the pig? Just absolutely chaps me, man, beyond the pale. <laughs> so they're doing a marching band here. And see this pig right here? This pig right here, This mar the person in the marching band, the reason they have the the citizen blocker right here, the reason they have this barrier right here, is so that people don't run into the marching band members. But the pig thinks he's above the law. Did you see it? Looks like he's standing there playing. The cop initiates violence on a high school kid in a marching band. I shouldn't say kid because they're young adults by the time they get to high school. He initiates violence on a kid, on a young man. What's your problem? Atrocious, getting paid overtime to interfere with a band and push kid. I'll bet he's done this before. These kids walk for miles each day. They walk and play. This is very hard work. Not only that, but if someone jostles you in the wrong way with that mouthpiece, bumps your teeth, and that ish hurts. Played French horn for several years in a marching band, especially if you don't see it coming. I saw multiple people lose their teeth over the course of my marching band career. Wow. Not trying to be pedantic. But they're actually, but they actually march, which is more difficult because everyone has to be marching. It can be very tiring. Yes, I'm aware. Many years ago, I was a drummer. Do you still have a hard on for the marching bands like this, or is it just me? Blah blah blah. Facts. Former snare drummer here. What an a hole. He should never be allowed to work on the force. But what happened? What what happened to the Louisiana cop? Let me see. 
what happened to the Louisiana cop who shoved the marching band member? NOPD officer removed from parade duty after shoving student. Officer removed mother livid after NOPD officer seemingly shoves her son. NOPD officer investigating after officer shoves band member. So, so sorry. You guys can't see what I'm seeing here. Let me share this with you. I apologize. I didn't know you guys couldn't see it. NOPD officer removed from parade during shoving. Officer was removed for parade duty. Mother wants apology. Mother livid. NOPD investigating after officer shoves band member. These cops are our enemies. The, the cops are the enemy of people. Sorry, uh, 8th District Front Desk is not available. Record your message at the top. I'm going to change policing. I'm going to change it. As governor, I'm going to change it. I'm going to change everything. You'll see. The number you dialed is not in service. reached the New Orleans Police Department non-emergency line or English Chevy or stay on the line if you're experiencing a life-threatening emergency and are located in Orleans Parish please hang up and down 911 please have note taking material ready to copy down the information provided I'm ready did you know you can bypass the wait and report certain crimes online property damage lost property theft auto theft, and to supplement existing cases by visiting nola.gov slash NLPD online. Again, make your police report online at nola.gov slash NLPD online for crimes around property damage, lost property, theft, auto theft, or to supplement existing cases. To request a copy of a police report or background check, press 1. To reach the Orleans Parish Sheriff's Office or request information about an inmate in custody, press 2. To reach a certain police district, press 3. To reach a certain police unit, bureau, or officer, press 4. To reach the towing unit or any city infrastructure unit, press 5. To reach the court, the district attorney's office, traffic and municipal court, or the coroner's office, press 6. Press 9 to repeat these options or stay on the line to speak with an operator. New Orleans non emergency line. How can I help you? Hey, I was given a call because I'm I'm reading here. My name's Chili DeCastro. I'm a journalist, and everything I do is recorded. But I was more concerned right now about I saw a New Orleans cop push a high school student, elbow him. They put up the barriers to protect the students so they could march down the road. And I just want to know if that guy's been fired and his peace officer's license stripped away from him. He's obviously unfit to serve. I don't know, sir. You can call the police department and ask. Is there a number that I can read? Well, someone will answer where I can talk to someone who's in charge? 658-6080. Uh, what's the area code? 504. 504-658-5080. 
6080. I'll try that one. Look, you know, I know that you're not a copper, but uh, the cops in this country are out of control and it has to change. Okay. Ha- has to change, man. It has to change. All right. Okay. Thanks for your time. Have a good All day. Right. Bye-bye. Yeah. Sorry, 8th District Front Desk is not available. Record your message. When you are finished, hang up or press pound for more options. I'm really concerned here about the cop who shoved a high school student. That's what I'm concerned about. And I'd like to know if that cop's been fired or not. My name is Chili DeCastro. The name of my channel is called Delete Laws. And I would like to know if that cop was fired for pushing and shoving a high school kid. And then the other cops jumped in to back up the other jackboot thug pig who did the pushing. And that's why I'm calling right now. Thank you for your time. I mean, I mean, what do you guys, I mean, as we go down this, it's like, it's so frustrating to me to see these things happen um, thank you. So just so you guys know, um, tomorrow I get implants in these teeth. I'll no longer be able to pull out my flipper tomorrow. I'll have teeth in this head of mine tomorrow. I get surgery tomorrow. So I'm not looking forward to it, but they were going to give me, uh, they were going to give me some, Tylenol. And the last time I had oral surgery, I was in so much pain for so long that I had to just endure this horrible, horrible pain. So I told him today, I said, look, you got to give me some pain pills here. I don't want to take them. But in America, there's so many people who are strung out on drugs that they don't want, they don't want people to have pain pills because they're afraid that everybody's using pain pills for to be strung out on chemicals. And that's absolutely not true. So I saw this the other day and I wanted to share it with you guys. I wanted you guys to, to hear this. Um, uh, Basil, I want to cover your videos too. I I saw the other day, um, you kind of had, you had some words with the cop. I want to cover that. I want to get into it. Keep, keep editing, keep auditing Basil. It's only a matter of time before the cops will do something stupid, but I wanted to listen to this with you guys. And I wanted to see exactly what was said here. And this is an ex-slave who talks about, and this is a, this is from John Brooks over here. Let me give him a subscription and give him a like. And this says ABC story done in 1999 about slavery told by people who were slaves recorded in the 1940s. This post had over 10 million views with 50,000 comments showing the divide that still exists in America. I'm not withholding comments, even those I deem based on fiction. I believe everyone has a right to be heard. If your comment doesn't show up, it's because of YouTube filters. And so this is this is the 1940s recording from slaves. Years ago, I posted a clip of a 1999 ABC News story on voice recordings preserved by the Library of Congress. These recordings were actual voices of black Americans who were slaves in the United States. The video got over 10 million views and 500,000 comments, but YouTube forced me to take it down in order to stay in line with their new policies. So I'm now reposting it with the brief commentary and explanation. I'll have more thoughts at the end of the recording, so I'd like you to weigh in on the conversation once again. Thank you. But John Henry Falk may have experienced the most profound effect. He was a graduate student when he interviewed the former slaves, including the two women you hear in this broadcast. Himself interviewed just before he died in 1979, Falk was going on about how he believed in giving blacks the right to go to school, giving them the right to vote, giving them the right to go into anything they qualified for. And then he said, 
he experienced an epiphany. Yeah, sitting out on a wagon tongue with this old black man. And just telling him what a different kind of white man I was. I remember him looking at me very sadly and kind of sweetly and condescending and said, you know, you still got the disease, honey. I know you think you're cured, but you're not cured. You can't give me the right to be a human being. I'm born with that right. Now, you can keep me from having that. If you've got all the policemen and all the jobs on your side, you can deprive me of it. But you can't give it to me. Because I was born with it just like as you was. And my God, it had a profound effect on me. I was furious with him. But the more I reflected on it, the more profoundly it affected me. And I realized this was where it really was. Tell you the truth, when I think of it today, I don't know how I'm living. I remember that just as well. Looked like to me, I can't. We've been slaves all our lives, and mother was a slave, and sister was a slave, father was a slave. They know enough about reading right there. All that I know, they teach you to mind your master and your missus. Mama them didn't know where to go. You see, after she was broke, just turned, just like he turned to a mount, you know, didn't know where to go. They are haunting voices from the past, not actors reading a script or scholars reading a text, but the actual voices of men and women, Americans, who were born in slavery. My name is Fountain Hughes. I was born in Charlottesville, Virginia. My name is Fountain Hughes. My name is Fountain Hughes. I was born in Charlottesville, Virginia. My grandfather belonged to Thomas Jefferson. My grandfather was 115 years old when he died. And now I am 101 years old. Her people didn't have no beds when they were slaves. You all slept on the floor. Had it here and had it there. Just like a lot of uh, wild people, we didn't, we didn't know nothing. Didn't like looking no book. Harriet Smith, remembering what she saw as a small girl during the final days of the Civil War. He said, oh, I stood on that picket fence all day long, seeing them soldiers going back to silent zones in different places. Colored soldiers, colored soldiers in droves. That's mm -hmm. right along by our, house, our home. These recorded memories were among thousands of interviews done with ex-slaves in the 1930s and 40s. Can you remember slavery days very well? Of course, I remember all our white folks and all the names of them, all the children. Call every one of the children's names. Who, who did you belong to? Jim Bunton, the baby boy. The results of these digitally enhanced recordings are arresting, almost unbelievable. The idea of hearing the voices of actual slaves from the plantations of the Old South is as powerful, as startling, really, as if you could hear Abraham Lincoln or Robert E. Lee speak. Listen again to Fountain Hughes, who was born in 1848. We were slaves. We belonged to people. They sell us like they sell horses and cows and hogs and all like that, have them auction bench and they put you on, up on the bench and beat on you the same as you're bidding on cattle, you know. Much of what these three former slaves say may at first seem unremarkable. Much of what they say may surprise and upset. And their calm demeanor is at odds with the evil and violence we associate with slavery. Here is 91-year-old Texan Laura Smalley talking in the 1940s about the outcome of a tussle between two women, one black, one white, one slave, one mistress. The mistress tried to slap the slave, but the black woman pushed her into a chair. Laura Smalley was a girl at the time, but she remembers vividly what happened to the black woman when the master came home. Well, the thing that old woman poor old woman cat in the peach orchard and whipped her and you know just tied her hand this way you know around the peach orchard tree i remember that just as well looked like to me i can't and round the tree and whipped her and well she couldn't do nothing but just kick her feet you know just kick her feet but it, it just had a clothes all down to her waist you know just didn't have a plum naked but they had a clothes down to her waist and 
every now and then that hooker, you know, and then snuff the pipe out on her, you know, snuff the pipe out on her. You know, the embers in the pipe. I'm where you see the pipe smoking. Blow them out on her? Mm-hmm. Good Lord. Mm-hmm. Mercy. The plantation on which Smalley was a slave sounds brutal. She recalls scrambling with other children for food from a huge wooden tray, like a hog trough. All of them, you know, would get around that tree with spoons and eat city like mush or soup or something like that. And all of them children get around there and just eat, 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 eat. Fountain Hughes tells his interviewer about the relentless round of work for him on a Virginia plantation. The night never come without you had nothing to do. Time to cut the back up. But they want you to cut all night long, let me see you. You cut. And if they want you to hang all night long, you hang, you hang the back. It didn't matter about your tired, being tired, you're afraid to say you're tired. No, it's just, it's just sad, overall sad, and it's just not something that um, should have ever happened. And the scourge that that slavery did to our country. You know, I've told you the three elements of the Constitution that uphold slavery. One of those elements what goes back to the when you have the Constitutional Convention in 1770, 1788 and 171787, and then they push slavery down the road until night until 1808, 20 years down the road, we'll deal with it then. And it was just never dealt with. We just kept slavery going until 1865. And then the 14th Amendment was bastardized by four conservative Supreme Court justices on the Supreme Court who then said the 14th Amendment applies to big business. They have the right to contract. So they bastardized the Constitution so that people would remain enslaved underneath of the elitist working conditions that were just completely barbaric and inhumane. A police officer at the center of an intense traffic stop over a family pet finds himself on the other side of the law. KRQE investigative reporter Gabrielle Burkhardt obtained police video from the latest case that landed the now former officer and even... It's hard auditing, isn't it? Raya Hoot, serious audits. It's hard being an auditor. It's really hard work. It's difficult. You got to be really good at it. Take your time, buddy. Keep working. More hot water. Hello. Rio Rancho police video from November 15th shows officers responding to a home after a neighbor called police. What's going on? Um, can you just have a... <sighs> just a domestic thing, I guess. I've asked him to leave. I've asked him to let go of me and he wouldn't. And he wouldn't leave. The woman, who we're not identifying, tells officers she and her boyfriend, Jeremy Navarez, were arguing when he got physical and refused to leave her house. During that moment when he was holding you, did you feel that you were not free to leave? Correct, yes. Yeah. So they're not solving the problem, they're punishing and imprisoning, and she's going to go right back to him. Yes. I cannot leave. You're stronger than me. I could not leave. Okay. We're going to try and talk with them. Assume where he's on the way just because he Right, is. but there's no one to work out their differences. They're still in the house together. She's going to go right back to him. We have to solve the problem, not just punish it. We've seen that with drugs. How, how well is the war on drugs working out? It's not. It's not working out. Because you can't punish your way out of people being addicted to chemicals. You're not going to punish your way out of that. It's just not true is a police officer. Navarez was an officer with Bernalillo Police in the town of Bernalillo. He was also the officer at the center of a KRQE investigation from September. Face the away from me! Police lapel video from that stop shows Navarez pulling over a family for speeding. Oh, you remember this? We covered this. And holding them at gunpoint. My dog's about to die! The family's dog had been hit by a car, and they were rushing to get her to an emergency vet. Oh, my, God. my dog's breathing out of Okay. Their dog didn't make it. The Albrecht family couldn't believe how Navarez treated them. No one came at him. No one threatened him. And, and again, like, what did he see that scared him so bad? I mean, this guy was angry. So they're trained to be scared. That's the whole point. When people say more training, 
Remember, no, we have to defund and abolish law enforcers, change all the costumes to white and yellow, camera them out. Their first job is to retreat or protect the victim, not to pull their guns out and stand their ground and say, here's the deal. That's just not, it's not working. Raggo Monkey, are you in here? Did I see Raggo Monkey's name come across my screen just now? I thought I saw Raggo Monkey's name in here. Did I see that? Rago Monkey is in the room, I think. Rago Monkey. I've covered a few of your videos lately, man. Good to see you, bro. Months after that traffic stop, <laughs> Navarez admits to the Rio Rancho officers now questioning him that things were tense between he and the woman. Tried hugging her, that didn't pan out. She said that it hurt her back, I let her go. But the woman claims he wouldn't at first and insists Navarez wouldn't leave. Okay, so on those both occasions, she told you no. So another cop abusing his girlfriend or wife. It's so normal. It's so, so normal. So yeah. why would you continue to try and hold her? Yeah, just trying to, I guess, just make it work at some point. Okay. Um, is that a camera? That's when an officer notices a ring doorbell camera in the living room and asks to see the footage. Get your hands off of me now. Get your hands off of me. I said get your hands off. The motion sensing surveillance camera only captures a portion of the struggle, but the video, along with interviews officers conduct on scene, are enough in the end for Rio Rancho. Okay. You, you, it, it. Women and men do a lot more than just hold each other like that. I don't like pigs. I don't like pigs abusing women. I don't like men abusing women. However, he's holding her. They're having an argument. She wants to be let go. I get it. I don't do that. I've never done that ever in my life. There's there's no report of me ever abusing a woman ever. There's no 911 call. There's no battery charges. There's no assault charges. I've never done anything violent to anybody ever. I mean, before I was 25 years old, I had mutual combat in the street with people and that's what happened, but I've never abused a woman or hurt a woman. So I'm not advocating for abuse of women. I'm saying that, that we have to solve the domestic violence problem, solve the, the way that man interacts with a woman. He is abusing her here. That's a fact. He's holding her against her will. That's abuse. We have to, educate men through learning that you can't do that. They have to go to counseling together because she's going to go back to him. She's not bleeding. She's not bruised. She's not damaged. There's no permanent damage. There's no scarring. We have to solve that problem where men cannot hold women against their will. I totally disagree with abusing women. There's, you'll never see me be like, oh, yay. Oh, no, he can do that to her. No, he can't. I totally disagree with it. But we have to solve the problem of the domestic violence problem in this country. We have to solve the problem. If we don't solve the problem, it'll just continue to get worse and worse and worse. It's the worst it's ever been right now. Police to place Navarez under arrest for misdemeanor battery. Court records show the day after his arrest, the woman filed a restraining order against Navarez, saying he's, quote, threatening and notes he has access to firearms. We all have access to firearms. It's so stupid. You can get a firearm right now. Didn't Adam Lanza, the guy who killed all those kindergartners up there at Sandy Hook, didn't he go to his mama's house, kill her, stuff her under the bed, and then take her weapons? Yes, he did. Put a one in the chat if that's true. Adam Lanza murdered his own mother stuffed her underneath of a bed and took her firearms. He's threatening to have access to firearms. Every single person in here has access to firearms. Every one of you does. Every single one of you. So to think that it's just so stupid. It's just so stupid. Arms. After our investigation into the traffic stop handled by Navarez, administrators with Bernalillo Police and the town of Bernalillo wouldn't tell us if he was facing any discipline at the time, only that he was placed on administrative leave after the battery arrest. Then just last week, the town clerk confirmed Navarez was fired by BPD in December. We tried to reach Navarez and his attorney for his side of the story, but have not heard back. 
Gabrielle. Why would you want to talk to the mainstream media, state-run media press? You wouldn't want to. Burkhart, KRQE Investigates. The battery case against Novartis is still pending. We asked if there's been any action taken. There's been no action. So I show you guys something I'm working on right now. So this is going to be a channel here. Where is that? Right here. I'm going to subscribe here. Here is a uh, Heller gun dude. This is Mr. Dick Heller. I'm going to drop this down. I'm starting this man's YouTube channel with him and he's going to need some subscribers. If you support the second amendment, do me a favor. I dropped the link in the chat right there. I'm also going to drop it in the YouTube chat right here. So there that is get over here and subscribe to Heller gun dude. Uh, Dick Heller is, I'm an affiliate for Dick Heller and he has started a new venture and this is Dick Heller himself, the guy who saved the second amendment by challenging the Washington DC pistol ordinance. Nice. Um, it looks familiar. The name looks familiar. It looks familiar. Okay. So thank you. I appreciate that. Make sure that you guys subscribe to Heller gun dude. Thank you. I appreciate that. Let's get him a hundred subscribers real quick. Even if you have to leave the live and come right back, here's the link for that faith. It's not on Facebook. He doesn't have a Facebook one of these yet, but he does have an Instagram as well. Heller gun dude. That's his new YouTube and his Instagram. It's right there. That's what it looks like. If you need it's, this is what the URL looks like. It just says youtube.com forward slash at Heller gun dude. Let's get him a couple hundred subscribers just real quick. There it is. I just put that in there. And so we will, we will get this man some subscribers and he's actually going to come on. Uh, I have an interview with him coming up. We got 27 people. Let's get him to a hundred subscribers. That means I need 75 more people. If you're watching this later, it's, um, let me do it like this. It's how do I do this? Oh, okay. So it looks like this. That's what it looks like. There it is. And now I'm going to put it on the screen so you guys can see it. It is really easy to see. Oh, sorry about that. I guess I missed the wrong one. There it is. That's what it looks like if you're watching this later. It's youtube.com forward slash Heller Gun Dude because he doesn't have any videos posted. I um, not I didn't even create it. Somebody in the chat here who works with me created this for me. And I appreciate that. Thank you. You know who you are. I choose to keep my business relationships completely confidential. I have multiple business relationships with a lot of people. And somebody in this chat right now actually created this YouTube page for me. I gave him a tiny bit of money, like a couple quarters. Literally, I gave him a couple quarters. Chris Alderson has has um, has has gifted a membership. Thanks, Chris. Someone else is going to be a member. I have the DLZ app coming out, Team DLZ app coming out. We're probably still three weeks away. We're finishing Heller Gun Dude. And then if you guys want a preview to, so here's his YouTube page. Let me refresh this. Let's see if we can get to hundred subscribers. 51, we're halfway there. So let's get him to hundred subscribers if we can. I'm going to drop the link in the chat again. There it is. If you have to leave the live and come right back, go ahead and do it. I'll put it on the YouTube as well. I have the YouTube running in the background here. Let's get this man to hundred subscribers real quick. There that is. I put it in the chat on YouTube. I wonder if I can pull up the Facebook chat. I don't know if I can or not. Let me try real fast to see if I can pull up the Facebook live stream real quick here. I've never looked at the Facebook live stream while we're live, but let me just do that real fast. Switching over to the Facebook one. Okay, cool. I'm going to the page here. Are we live streaming? There it is right there. So let me, oh, it does show up here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to paste it right there into the Facebook chat too. Oh yeah, I put it there. It shows up. So cool. That is so cool. Super grateful. Thank you guys. I'm going to help Dick Heller get his message out. 56 subs. Let's get him to 100 subs. Good to see you. I am God. I was just looking for you earlier. Um, number three right here, SWE. Nice to see you, SWE Observer. KT subbed. Uh, Steve, thank you for subbing. I appreciate it, Melania. Thank you so much. Tina. Tiny Bloss, Tiny Bloss, 
Teniblus, Teniblus, Teniblus. So I'm I'm spending a little extra time here today because I have oral surgery tomorrow. Uh, I'll do a live stream super early in the morning tomorrow, like nine o'clock in the morning, and then I have. Um, if you want to get a trifold, oh, so Josh, uh, how do you get a pamphlet? So you go to deletelaws.com. If you want the one I mail to you, it's twenty bucks, and go into the notes section. And make sure that you say if you want an extra trifold for free, I'll put in your envelope. Or if you want a pair of Fifth Amendment cop cards, driver and non-driver. Let me know when you order. It's a $20 version, not the $9 version. Let me know if you want an extra trifold in your envelope or if you want the cop cards in your envelope. Sometimes I give away both for free with the purchase of your trifold, but I'm not going to do that till the end of the month. I did it Super Bowl Sunday, and then I'm going to do it again. And... So let me know when you go to deletelaws.com, this is where you go to deletelaws.com with a Z, Josh. And then when you get a trifold, there's a place you can leave me a note. Let me know in the note. Do you want an extra one of these or do you want a pair of these? These are only 10 bucks. So two of these are 40 bucks. Two of these, uh, one of these and this is 10, this is $10. So this is less expensive, but then you get the 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 cop cards that are made out of the same material as your driver's license as a hotel key. So that's what I got going on. Avery, what is going on? How are you, man? Good. To, let me refresh Heller Gun Dude, see if we got him to 100 subscribers. 63 subscribers on Heller Gun Dude. Let's get him to 100. We have 373 people here between Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Those are the three ch channels that we are streaming on right now. Oh, you, you got yours three days? Cool, cool, cool. And then remember... And I'm going to discontinue hoodies at the end of February. I'm not going to sell any more hoodies at the end of February. Right now, I have every size, small, medium, large, extra large. I have one double XL left. And then I have seven triple X left. I have one double XL in the hoodies left. And I will show you. I'm just going to go big screen here. We're going to come back to Heller Gun Dude in a second. So this is what the hoodie looks like. We don't stop. There it is right there. And then this is the back of the hoodie. It says Team DLZ on the back. There it is. And with, with every single hoodie inside of the hoodie envelope, inside of the inside of the hoodie packaging, I have included, and they're already pre-packed. I got them all balled up, pre-packed. A pair of cop cards are in there, and a trifold is in every single hoodie. It comes with your hoodie now. Now, when I buy a dozen or two dozen or a hundred hoodies, I simply wrap the, the trifold in there. And I wrap a pair of cop cards in there. So we have every size in right now. Uh, the website should be updated to show that. So make sure you guys get your hoodies while I have them in. While I have them in. And then remember, if you guys can't afford the $20 trifold, I have a $9 one you print at home that you can purchase. And if you can't afford the $9, all you have to do is go to my website, go to contact and put free trifold in. And I spend an hour a day, sometimes more, sending out free trifolds to people so that they can print them out. Every day I do it, day, I do it in the morning, I do it in the night. This morning I sent out 100 free trifolds to people at least. I say 100 because you lose track, <laughs> at least 100. So there's no barrier to entry to be on Team DLZ. I will give you my products for free. You have to print them out yourself. If, if, if you hit me up and say, hey, send me something for free, I may hit you back and say, send me $7 so that you can cover the, the cost of the trifold to ship to you. You know, so... I, I I just uh, put a one in the chat if you have a trifold, if you have a cop card, because to me, I feel it's like my duty and my obligation to make sure that everybody has this knowledge. We're at 63 subscribers. Let's get them to 100. I'm, we're at 67. Holy smokes. I guess I don't have that much sway just yet, do I? Got to get more people. Got to get them to 100 subscribers. Heller gun dude. Got to get them. What would you say? Um... Uh, much is the hoodie from from Scotland. Not really sure what you're saying. Um, I have a couple larges left in. Only a couple larges. I mean, I really don't have that many left. I only have a half a dozen in each size that I went to Los Angeles and I got them all printed up. So I have them in right now. Yeah, I, I think Josh is a little bit behind I mean, it's messed up. These cops need to be fired and charged, but at least old boy is alive with no holes. We'll probably get a decent payday out of the deal. Maybe, 
Maybe he will. He should. He should. He should get seven figures for being shot at at least thirty times by those two pigs. But um, and what's the matter? You said you only have to leave the chat, not the video, to go sub to Heller Gun Dude. Oh, you only have to leave the chat. Okay. So here's the link for Heller Gun Dude. I'm gonna drop it down in the chat. I want to get him to a hundred. Dick is eighty years old, and he is a really cool dude. He is a really cool dude. Um, international shipping. Oh, how much is it to ship to Scotland? I'm not sure. Um, the only way I will ship to Scotland is through Zelle. Uh, I had someone from England recently reach out to me and say, Hey, can I get a hoodie? And I said, sure. And you guys know how I am. Um, some of y'all have, we've screwed up on the size and I just told you let's sell it or let's keep it, you know, uh, sell it if you can sell it or just keep it. Um, and so hopefully, uh, Jeff, hopefully you're in here, Jeff, hopefully you ship that hoodie. Hopefully Jeff shipped that hoodie. I got to contact Jeff. I'm going to call him when I get off this live because someone was waiting and I have one double XL hoodie left one total. So happy Valentine's day to team DLZ. Happy Valentine's day to team DLZ. Uh, Ryu, you got to send me your videos. Send me, go to, go to delete laws.com, go to contact and then Rahoot, you got to send me links to your video so I can watch them. And then I'll get people to subscribe to your channel, but I got to see them. I know what Heller is producing. I know what he's doing already. And so thank you. Thank you, Felicia. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah, Dick Heller fought for our gun rights and won. And without Dick Heller, we wouldn't have 75, only 25 subscribers to go to get to Dick Heller's 100 subscribers. That would be absolutely awesome. And I'll come back to Dick Heller. Let's, let me show you guys something that I found on Reddit. This is hilarious. Can you guys see it? So here is the, here is the medals that cops get for hurting us. So let me zoom in on this thing. So this medal right here, whoops. This medal right here is for beating a handcuffed suspect. How funny is that? The, beating your wife, you get this little patch right here for perjury. For they misspelled perjury, it must be someone from the UK. This is uh, for for lying. For planting chemicals, you get this little patch. For ticket quotas met, you get this patch. For grooming a minor, you get this patch right here. Number of non-threatening dogs killed, ninety-two. Covering up for a DUI for a fellow pig, you get this button. Donuts most consumed, you get this button. Tasering a grandmother. <laughs> Shooting an unarmed suspect, you get this patch right here. Number of overtime hours fudged, 1,200. Evidence, planting evidence, <laughs> this one. Attendance, you get this patch. I saw this on Reddit and I was like, that is hilarious. That is absolutely hilarious. I wanted to share that with you guys. And when I go down my Reddit, the first thing that I always see is presidents because I leave more, I in, involve, I, I love this one right here. I love presidents because um, it, it breaks down the presidents, which I've studied so intensely. And. Dude, I can film on public property. Listen to me. I can film. Hey, hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, 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 Camera. Don't touch my camera. What the fuck? Don't touch. Dude, what the fuck? Hey, 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 sir. He just pushed me. Dude. Yo. He just assaulted both of y'all. He just assaulted both of them. I can, sir. Officer, can I film? I can film here, right? I can stand here. Go over there. Go over there. Okay, why'd your officer just push me? What the fuck? Bro, you just assaulted him, dude. What the fuck? I'd like to file police. Look at the cop suckers over here. These women, Karen and Kevin's over here. K Karen's over here. Dude, what the fuck? I'd like to file police support on your officer. Holy <laughs> shit. So they're having some sort of altercation. Or no, he got mad that they were filming him. Dude, I can film on public property. Listen to me. I can hey, film. Hey, oh, 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 oh,
camera. Oh, please, please. Don't touch my camera. What the fuck? Don't touch. Don't dude, what the fuck? Hey, 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 hey sir. He just pushed me. Dude. Yo. He just assaulted both of y'all. He just assaulted both of them. I can, sir. Officer, can I film? I can film here, right? I can stand here. Tell him to go over there. Go over there. Okay, why'd your officer just push me? What the? F Bro, you just assaulted him, dude. What the f I'd like to file police support on your officer. Holy shit! Bro, what the fuck? Are you good, bro? Are you good? Yeah, like, well, I'm on, dude. All right, I'm on. Literally on public property. Right. I'm on public property. So just real quick, um, let's let me point something out here real quick. So Derek Razor, uh, that was a joke from Reddit. I don't know if those were it was a military thing that they had used as a as a pig patch, but you know, no disrespect intended, Derek. As you know, I come from a long military family who served in every single war since the Revolutionary War. So I'm not hacking the people who serve in the military. It was just a joke as they make fun of cops who wear the same patches that military guys wear. So that, that's all that was about. I wasn't trying to be disrespectful or disgrace your service in any way, shape, or form, sir. I love you too, buddy. So here is Dick Heller, 81 subscribers. We got Dick Heller to 81 subscribers. We're 19 short to get to the 100. I want to get to 100 so here is the www.youtube.com forward slash at Heller Gun Dude. If you're a Second Amendment supporter, um, please get over there as quickly as you can. Uh, Dakota Wolf wants an XL hoodie. There is somebody who comes in the chat. I'm not going to tell you who it is, but there's somebody who comes in the chat who often contacts me and says, hey, Chili, can you get a hold of this person? I want to buy them that. And then I reach out to that person and I say, hey, and by the way, uh, Mills, Mr. Mills, who wanted a trifold, I have tried to reach Mills. I've tried to find you. Somebody sent me money for your trifold, Mills. And the fact that I have the money and I haven't sent you out a trifold yet, oh, it weighs on me every day. And it's been like a week. So Mills, if you're here, M-I-L-L-Z username, uh, Michael Eline is in the room, everybody. This is Michael Eline is the lawyer who has a bar card in California and Texas who takes uh, federal civil rights cases on contingency. This guy right here. So if you need a lawyer and you have video of you being abused by the cops in California or Texas, this lawyer right here, Michael Eline, he takes cases on contingency. In other words, he does all the legal work for you for free. And then you guys split the money at the end or whatever it is, whatever you guys work out between each other. But every time I, I meet an attorney who's willing to be a freedom fighter, Michael Eline has a channel. Let me, let me find his channel real quick. Um, 2A all the way. Yep. Let me see if I can find your channel. I want to get Heller Gun Dude to 100 subscribers. And then, Michael, we'll do you next because I want people to focus. I want people to focus right now on getting 100 subscribers to Heller Gun Dude. And then the next show or the next one, the next rendition of Delete Laws, we will get you to um, Chevy. Good to see you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Yep. Uh, Michael Eline is very knowledgeable. He, he does... Um, you saw Mills yesterday. Can you have him contact me? Somebody sent me money for his trifold. And as you know, when I send a trifold, I send a pair of cop cards. Unless you put in the notes today only that you want an extra trifold. That's today's special. If you if you get one trifold for 20 bucks that I ship to you, you can have your choice. Do you want an extra trifold or do you want a pair of cop cards? The cop cards are only 10 bucks. So I would do the trifold cop cord combo and then I'd get the extra trifold for free because this one's 20 and these are 10. That's what I would do if I were you. Semper Fi, bro, right there. Appreciate that. Let's see if Heller Gun Dude's closer to that 100 subscribers. 94, we're only six subscribers away from getting Heller Gun Dude, his first 100 subscribers. Uh, tell Mills to reach out to me so that I can get him. We're nine people away. Breaking the flaw. Break. I have a video coming out from breaking the flaw. I got a video coming out from breaking the flaw. I don't want to ruin it for you guys because I'm, I, I mean, it's taken a long time to put together all the pieces so we can tell the story of what breaking the flaw went through. 
but he was wrongfully arrested. It's on video. He was wrongfully arrested. Right on, Rayut. I'll take a look at your audits, my friend. I'll take a look at your audits. Uh, Rayut, can you do me a favor? Can you subscribe to Heller Gun Dude? I just want to get him to 100 subscribers. That's my goal. After we get him to 100, 98 during the live stream, maybe we get another 100 from people. Because as you guys know, about 10,000 people watch my long form videos. And that's because YouTube can stop sharing them. As soon as I get to about 10,000 views on a long form video, YouTube cuts off the stream. Won't put the videos out into streams. I, I know that's what's happening. Just like... Um, just like when um, uh, Joe Mama wants somebody to buy him a trifold, you'd be amazed, dude. You'd be amazed. People reach out to me, Joe Mama. Make sure you shoot me an email, Joe Mama, with your full name and mailing address because there's a good chance someone will reach out to me and say, hey, I'll pay the 20 bucks for him. It is really crazy how good the people in this room are. I am God is here, Shanta. Nice to see you. YouTube is effed up. I know that for sure. Um. Cool. You just subscribed. Let's see if we got him over 100. 100. Yay. Yay. We will do um, We will do Michael Eline tomorrow. And then if you guys want, if you're on Facebook, this is the Facebook page. That's the Delete Laws Facebook page if you guys want to go to that. If you're on Facebook more than you are YouTube and you want to watch the live stream through Facebook, go to that tab right there. And that's the delete laws. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm just on the other side of this cold. So we have 7.5 thousand subscribers on Facebook, uh, as you can see from delete laws. And here is the delete laws link right there link right there. So we got him to 100. And then Michael Eline, let's do you tomorrow in the morning. Michael, I'll be on live early tomorrow about 9am because I have oral surgery later in the day tomorrow and I can't eat or drink any liquids or foods. I think it was 10 or 12 hours before my oral surgery tomorrow. I will, I will no longer. <clears throat> what is that? Mr. Drone, Mr. Bones gifted a $300 drone. I don't know what you're talking about. Who do I give that to? Oh, to me? You gifted it a drone to me? I didn't I didn't know that. I did not know that. Gilbert is a new member. Thanks, Gilbert, for coming. Gilbert, make sure you get a trifold and a cop card in your car. Today I'm giving a two for one on trifolds. You buy one, you get one free. So look forward to that. All right, listen. I've been on for a little over two and a half hours. I got to get the flock out of here. I wish I could stay all day, every day. Chevy! Michael Dolan. I was just thinking about you this morning. How you doing, buddy? Derek is in here. What's the matter? You Gilbert. I'm super happy. We're at BJ's having lunch. My homie Gabriel right on. Nice to see you. Okay. Mr. Bones. I will check my post office box in Las Vegas. Um, my post office box in Las in Las Vegas. Looking forward to that. Uh, can't wait to see that drone. Thanks a lot, man. Super, super. Oh, he does. Is that right? You got 327 now. 410 subscribers. Wow. Oh, I guess YouTube took a little time. So I guess most of you guys, because there's there's only 350 people in here right now between Facebook, YouTube, and and um, Twitter. So 400 people and 10 subscribed. He's going to start kicking out videos this next week. So it's pretty exciting what's going on with the Keller right now. He's He's coming out from behind the shadows and we're creating a public profile for him. I'm helping him do it because I am a huge second amendment supporter without the second amendment this past two years when i was getting all these death threats i would have been a basket case but because i've got my ar and because i've got my pistol i i feel a lot safer knowing that i have those that i can defend myself in the event that someone does attack me so um thank you guys for subscribing to dick heller if you guys see this video later let's get him to a thousand subscribers he's going to need four thousand watch hours to be able to go live and he's going to want to go live so oh you ordered your you ordered your sweatshirt um jt soup um okay so you put in the notes that you wanted one size i will check the notes of the hoodies and make sure that we get you the right size out i promise i promise you shanta uh, i know you got your hoodie I know you got your hoodie and uh, Lori Heineman, you should be getting your hoodie today or tomorrow. I'm pretty sure that we have shipped that. If we didn't ship it, we'll ship it today. It should be shipped out already. His name is Dick Heller, the dude who saved the second amendment. 
All right, listen, um, Bruce, thank you for coming. I appreciate it. Basil, what is going on? Unisex, KT, Chevy, Cope Doggy Dog, I saw in the house earlier. Cope Dog's been with me since the very beginning. Felicia, I will show your videos tomorrow along with Michael Eline's uh, channel tomorrow. So we'll do that tomorrow. Felicia, she sent me some cool videos from Australia. And so I'm super excited about that. Tina, how are you? I've never heard of Joseph Blocker. I'd like to I'd like to know. Send me some links. Go to deletelaws.com, go to contact and send me some links if you would please. Adam, can I get an OTVO in the comment section? Overturn Terry versus Ohio. If I can get that, that would be absolutely amazing. Clown Patrol, nice to see you. Tiffany, how are you? Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. Um are you the same guy from the UK? Because if you're going to buy anything from me from Scotland or the UK, you have to use Zelle because otherwise people cancel their orders when I ship them their products. And I don't want that to happen to, to me again. So um, it was difficult to get that stopped. So we did actually stop it. But OTV. Oh, Steve is in the room. Nice to see you, Steve Vigil. Thank you, Jessica. How are you, dear? Nice to see you. Nice to see everybody. Owen, how are you? Avery, good to see you. Guideline UK, good to see you. Good to see every Dennis Anderson. Good to see you. Lester. It's nice to see you. Thank you for coming. Dakota Wolf. Can I get a hoodie? Um, uh, there's only a few left. So go to deletelaws.com and see if you can get one. If not, I'll see if anybody contacts me about getting you a hoodie. Uh, people do do it. It is crazy. I do get contacts. One time someone sent me a hundred bucks and said, Chili, give away five trifolds. And so I just picked five people and I sent them all trifolds. There's stuff that happens behind the scenes that you don't see me do that are super important. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody, and happy birthday, Lori. Lori Heineman, happy birthday to you. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. That is this rendition for Delete Laws. I'll see you tomorrow morning early. It'll be about 9 a.m. and I'm on tomorrow. And then I have oral surgery right after that, and I don't know if I'll be able to talk for a couple days. So looking forward to seeing you guys then. Thank you for coming. I'll see you guys on the next one. Later, Gators.